Hello, chatlings. Uh, oh, my desktop audio is a zero. That's not good. Someone could be a deer and tell us if our Hello, audio is working. Chatlings. Well, I can uh, hear you. Oh, my desktop audio is a zero. Can you hear me? That's not good. My desktop yes. audio is now Someone responding. Could be a deer and tell yes. us if our audio is working. Chatlings. Also, well, I can hear you. This it's is echoing on the stream. My desktop. Yes. Oh wait, that is me. Fantastic. Hi, chat. We're off to a great start today. Uh, this is Magic Fish Radio. I'm Ms. Chrysla, and I'm generally the producer, but today I'm just a player, uh, and I don't know what I'm doing. That's so, okay, my uh, camera's fighting me at the moment. Woohoo! Uh, that said, uh, I already wrote it in chat, but if, if our stream gets interrupted during the game part by an errant ad, please tell us in chat, because I am concerned about new Twitch shenanigans. Uh, Magic Fish Radio, we, we stream TTRPGs on Tuesday night, which is now, and Saturday nights, uh, with other games. Okay. My brain is gone. Okay, so uh, tonight our GM is John. Who knows what he's doing? Because I don't. Yay. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves now. <laughs> so, over to you, bro! <laughs> Good evening, hello, welcome, and thank you all for rejoining us after our uh, short hiatus because uh, life and moving. Um, obviously, new backdrop, new gaming station, um, which is why I was having some trouble with the camera a moment ago. I uh, have to get everything reorganized the way it needs to be. Uh, but yes, thank you all for joining us as we continue our adventures through 1920s era vampire the masquerade, dragging around our uh, our newly formed coterie off on some grand adventure or another, or just general bullshit if they wish to continue uh, undermining each other or building up their own resources, which is, you know, a very vampire thing to do. Undermining hoops. Uh, I mean, undermining anyone who gets in the way of you acquiring what you want. Well, that's not undermining, that's getting them on board. <laughs> Could be for you. Oh, six one half dozen with the other. Uh, tonight we resume the campaign, or the chronicle, rather, the appropriate term for the system. It would be right for me to do that. Uh, and we will be um, carrying on wherever the coterie wishes to go. Uh, speaking of the coterie, uh, we should probably go roundabout and have everyone reintroduce themselves to remind everyone because. Um, Everyone's memory is shit these days. So please, starting with the lovely Miss Chrysla, who we wouldn't be here without, why don't you begin us round the circle? Okay, and then I can get down to remembering if we have anything left from last week's, uh, last game's uh, channel point buy-in pool. <laughs> uh, before I get into character, uh, we don't run on cash, we run on channel points on this channel, so if you want to buy buffs or trolls for the players and or GMs, depending on how you look at it, check out the channel points button and buy stuff. Yay! Uh, in Now, producer mode disabled. Hi, I'm Ms. Grisola, and tonight I am playing Sharice Laurie, a Malkavian occultist who's wearing Victor late Victorian era fashion in the 1920s and looks like a 20 year old version of everyone's grandma. And I'm English, which will be interesting because we might end up in London and I haven't been there since I've became undead. Yay. Uh, next. Oops, does that uh, the going counterclockwise would next would be Ari. Oh yes, sorry, counterclockwise. Yes, hi. This is hi. This is Ari. I play Isabel Quincy, a uh, a speak a speak as a as a running runaway uh, runaway heiress venture who um, most recently has had her uh, has gained something she hasn't had uh, ever in her life a landlord. <laughs> uh, Moving on to that here. She is not particularly happy about this. Especially because he's a Bruja. Because this is what the vent what this is what the Bruja do to the Ventru. 
I think she cares less about that and more about the idea that she. I will point out that like I should be that literally one of her um, one of her touchstones and convictions is charitably I should be free. More realistically, I should be able to do whatever I want to do and not suffer any consequences. And now she is beholden to something that isn't just like the the like society and like the rules of things this is she's now beholden directly to a person she does not she's not a fan she's not a fan responsibility is good for you it almost certainly is <laughs> personal growth i think that's on you then bart killian oh yeah. uh, i am bart killian i am a bruja Politico. I have uh, designs on most of uh, South Boston, and uh, if you're not on board, you're probably going to get run over. I recently explained this lesson to a young and upcoming venture who is seemingly on board for now. We'll see if they get run over. <laughs> and that then brings us over to dear Dracus. Hello, I'm Dracus. I'll be playing Vern Quincy, who is uh, Isabel's brother. Uh, I am a upper class socialite turned fucked up sewer dweller, so I'm a nos, um, and I'm still figuring out the system, so we'll see where this goes. <sighs> and, uh, as for the pool, uh, players, we have four plus ones in the pool. The GM has nine left over from our last game. Unless, John, you used more than one and didn't tell me. No, no, I only used the one. Yep, okay. And uh, it, other things... Honestly, it wouldn't have helped considering how I was rolling. Yeah, zeros. So, the fact that rolling zero successes, rolling all of these dice, should be nearly, nearly impossible, considering that these characters had pools of 10 to 12 dice. The fact that they were consistently coming up with zero successes. <laughs> yep. It's Matter just how GM well, luck. Yep. <laughs> Hashtag GM like life. Uh, you can stack your characters all they want, but if they don't roll well, well, bleep. It do be like I mean, that sometimes. Their, their mental statistics were shit. Their physical statistics were where they excelled. And then, of course, you both... Some of you steamrolled that poor woman <laughs> and her paramour. <laughs> they had no mental defense against you at all. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, should we have told... Well, Sharice would... I don't know if Sharice actually knew what was happening, but now that we know who... Once we met the professor, maybe we should have warned him. <laughs> Maybe you should take her out of your will. How do you know about my will? I just, we do. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Easy. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We broke into your house and went through your stuff looking for you. It's fine. I found secrets. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, uh, chat. Uh, you can buy us uh, plus ones for the players or the GM. Uh, you can buy the player's willpower points, which are helpful to make us roll better, usually. Unless our dice hate us too today. Or just to add to your willpower pool if you've spent them and you need to then roll a willpower check. Well, no, because that's, if you've that's... spent willpower, your pool is smaller. Um, are we going to use it like that? Oh, okay. I mean, that's the rule in V5. Well, yeah, but... You... yeah but does, mm -hmm. does the rule include people on Twitch buying you extra willpower with channel points? Then you can pull from that pool to re to restock anything that you've spent to bring it up back up to its maximum. Um, okay. Uh, and also you can... What is it called again? Uh, you can turn a... Uh, oh, turn a one beast failure, failure with S critical. Yeah. Basically the... the make viewer, a crit less bad. Or is it make yeah. a crit more or less bad? Make a failure less bad okay. so effectively a bestial failure is when you have so drastically failed with hunger dice that 
the beast is not just rattling against the bars and tugging on the leash. It has knocked down the door and is running the show. And the beast charges through you and you frenzy. A messy critical is when you critically succeed at something with more of those critical successes happening on hunger die, or at least two of them happening on hunger die. At which point the beast knocks on its cage hard enough for you to succeed, but succeed in a less than ideal way, i.e. you were trying to make a check to, okay, a good example of this. Somebody is laying hands on Isabel. Vern gets involved to get their hands off of her. Vern, for whatever reason, hasn't fed recently, so he has a large number of hunger dice. He rolls, he critically succeeds on the strength athletics to remove this person's hands, but too many of those successes were on hunger dice. So instead of just grabbing the hand and gently removing it, Vern grabs the hand and then dislocates the person's shoulder or rips them off and shoves them into a wall. And basically a more aggressive version of whatever it was you were trying to do. And if you were using a discipline at the time, you may inadvertently tap into the beast's power and perhaps exert a greater level of power through that discipline than you would normally have access to at the storyteller's discretion. So if I think you rolled enough critical successes and enough of those were on hunger dice and one of you has potence and you were attempting to make a potence check, oh yeah, you you succeeded. You messy succeeded. You didn't just kick that door down. You kicked that door down through the wall. And you and messy criticals can very easily become masquerade breaches. So Okay. So uh Oh, we have lost V No We have lost the dog. dog. You need Bart and his dog. You'll never survive. We need them. them. We need the dog. Oh god, yeah, we need Bart. <laughs> Welcome back. Ooh. Now that we've <laughs> lost the now that we've lost the Giovanni, he's the only like responsible like normal adult here. I'm responsible. This is not something you usually say about. <laughs> I'm very also... good at punching. We can make a whole responsible person here, Sharice. Hey, Let's go. I can make I'm somebody else punch. Hey, I'm not very good at punching personally. <laughs> I just make somebody else do that. So is that true that the three of you in a trench coat comprise one adult human? Yes. I'm yes, absolutely. <laughs> all three of us are adults. We're just, we're all three of us are adults. We're just very, very weird. Listen. I just hide when violence happens. That's, that's strategic and practical. I have, I have a certain set of skills. This set of skills includes networking and... <laughs> My I'm just feral and know everyone's secrets. Well, I'm... I know everything, so yes. <laughs> I know things and I don't drink and that's what I do. Oh, and I'm uh, very good at finding secret safes. Well, I'm relatively certain the audience doesn't want to watch us just have little giggle fits here as you all decide which one of you is more of an adult or how many of you it takes to combine into a, a a you'd, gestalt adult. Actually, you'd be True surprised enough. at how much those end up being clips and not talking about game mechanics. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get to the gaming part. <laughs> All right. So. Ah. Yeah, we'll pick this up a week later after you've all had a chance to uh, get adjusted to your new situations. Uh, perhaps find a little time to sit and discuss with Professor Ormond uh, and your open invitation to board the dirigible the next time it lands in Boston for its uh, no longer maiden voyage, but for its next trip back across the pond is still made available to you all. Uh, however, uh, some of the people with whom uh, arrangements have been made to pay you your rewards uh, are very busy, so they may not have space open to offer you these boons forever. Uh, but if you choose to hold off and stay in Boston, that is something for the Coterie to decide amongst yourselves. Uh, the last week has been 
fairly quiet for the most part, uh, aside from the day after you all rescued Professor Ormond and it was discovered by the, uh, by the ghouls that went to relieve the kindred that had been watching the warehouse, uh, that those kindred had been slain and the warehouse itself had been emptied. And the only thing left behind had been a note. Thank you all so very much for not putting the barriers back up when we left. I have people very interested in getting back their things. And also, I got back something of mine. I appreciate this greatly. And Prince King, it's always lovely to see you again. Sincerely, Konigsmacher. Um, I won't make you all roll for this because when this is brought to the prince's attention and to the attention of Professor Ormond, uh, the, the prince knows exactly who Konigsmacher is by reputation. Konigsmacher, uh, their name really says it all. They are a kingmaker. They are a kindred who has supposedly raised barons and princes and has even supposedly gotten involved in mortal affairs for more than 3,000 years. If there's been a political upheaval, if Konigsmacher wasn't directly involved, they may have whispered in someone's ear how best to get it achieved. And if a political upheaval failed, there's maybe a chance Konigsmacher was involved or whispered into the ears of someone paying them more how to prevent it from happening. Are, are they a kindred? Or would you just not know? According to King, as Professor Ormond has no idea who this person is, every kindred believes Konigsmacher is a kindred. But from what he's heard through the gangrel, there are just as many Garu that believe that Konigsmacher is a Garu or another changing breed. Hmm. And presumably the mages believe the same thing. But whether supernatural or mortal, there's always been whispers that Konigsmacher has been involved. Whether this is just an alias, something that someone has fed into in order to support their uh, own air of mystery, or just the name someone signed on there just to be an asshole after they looted the warehouse is anyone's guess at this point. But the prince is not a uh, is not a fan of the idea of Konigsmacher being involved. Excuse me, I think my wife left the kettle plugged in because I hear water boiling in the kitchen. Give me just one moment. Yeah? Um, all hmm. this kingmaker person is actually just a boogeyman and various entities sign their name that way to avoid blame themselves. I don't like that. Could always be a mantle passed down as well. Hmm. I mean, the professor should have put the words back up before he left. That's well, on him. Yes, I or he could have told us about them. On, yes. It seems on for the professor not to have done that. Yeah. yeah I mean, he was there. Yeah. yeah. What? With broken ribs and a slowly healing spine, yes. Sure, but like, he's got people, right? He knows he, a guy who can put up wards. He, he's mortal. He's He is, and aside from a couple of artifacts he's used to patch his body up over the course of his decades of fighting various monstrous things out in the void, he's an otherwise unremarkable, unawakened mortal. He's not even a hunter. Yeah, but if anybody was going to put the words back up, it should have been him since he was still in the building. Yeah. Yeah. He also he is, told us uh, he would do that. Yeah. He is, um, well, he also thought that uh, he would have 24 to 48 hours to, you know, get back his ability to use his legs before someone would come in and loot the entire warehouse, which seemed unfeasible, but um, still happened anyway. Uh, and Professor Ormond himself admits that he is too old and too tired to continue this quest. Uh, and he will make a point to inform other investigators like himself to bear an eye out for these things happening or changing within the greater world 
but it is not a concern of yours unless this thing happens to rear its ugly face in your general direction. So none of you need worry about that. It's, it's a problem for him and his. You all have enough shit to worry about, especially with the Sabbat constantly beating down on Boston's door. Speaking of which, a Sabbat coterie had been caught and removed in the course of the week between the end of the original Chronicle and this one. Uh, rather sizable one at that, which only further uh, concerns Prince King, as it does not make him look like the strongest leader at the moment, but he is doubling down on whatever resources, and his knights are redoubling their efforts to ensure that there are no Sabbat agents left within the city. But that's not an issue for all of you at the moment. At this point in time, Actually, I would say probably at this point in time, you would all be hanging out um, in Bart's new smoking room, directly above uh, Isabel's, directly above Isabel's uh, speakeasy. His own private cush little office into which furniture was moved in surprisingly quickly. Um, gifts from a friend. <laughs> and the four of you have gathered together here um, for the sake of talking, checking up with one another, uh, and also so that Isabel can uh, hopefully try and argue down her rent because she is not happy with the rates that you are charging, Bart. <laughs> you see them as fair, but Isabel, not so much. So, please. In the office of Bart Killian, the four of you are gathered. One some same. of you cordially, some of you pissed. All I'm saying is the fact that I am an asset to, is that like regardless of our relationship here, I am an asset to this building. I bring people in, and that brings and that brings stuff to you. Surely we can like, uh, surely we can arrange for something a little low, a, a little lower, so I can ex so I can be, have more resources to expand my operation. What's good for me here is what's good for you. Okay, so your property taxes for the month are thirty five. Yeah. <clears throat> your liquor license is another fifteen. You've got overhead for the building itself, maintenance and repairs. You've got six or seven other intangibles that you don't realize you're even paying for. And I think your rent right now is fine. If I were going to change it in any direction, it would be going up, not down. He's got a point, Isabel. Isabel is just fuming. <laughs> you can just see the scene. She is upset. Because I feel like Isabel knows Bart's right about this because she has like a training in academics and specialized in business and like has three dots in finance. So she absolutely knows he's right. Yeah. She doesn't like being she outplayed. She doesn't like this. <laughs> I don't have any idea that he's right. I'm just trying to push Isabel's buttons. You somehow get them to, re to uh, repeal prohibition, we'll talk. Now that might be fun. Because then all this is legal again and we don't have to go through backroom distilleries and other things of that nature. Yes, but where's the fun in that? I just told you it might be fun. If you have fun, you can have lower rent. You pick. Isabel rolls her eyes but doesn't say anything. Uh, Charisse is discreetly looking around the office for a secret safe, but without touching anything. She's just, like, heightened sensing. So she's just oh. looking around the room, trying not to look obvious, and, yeah. Okay. Uh, in that case, <laughs> let's go with a, uh... It's been a while since I've actually looked at one of these sheets. Because she is... It's awareness. So make me a wits awareness check since you're just sort of casting your eyes around rather than actively shifting books and looking around. Uh, can I use my heightened... Can I add my aspects since I'm a habitual... Uh, not presumptive. Uh, compulsive aspects monkey. <laughs> um, well, you're, you said you're using it for heightened senses. How would you be using your heightened senses? What would you actively be looking for with heightened senses, casting your eyes around the room to try and notice if Bart has a hidden safe? 
or something in this room. Um, visually, scrape marks on the floor. Okay. Uh, seams in places there shouldn't be seams. All right. Uh, changes in the patterns of wood paneling where there shouldn't be. Uh, Sound-wise, do I hear rats in that wall or not? Kind of thing. Fair enough. All right. Then okay, if there are rats, we should definitely be driving down the rent. <laughs> then uh, roll me wits awareness and throw in your all specs. Okay, oh. and one hunger die. Okay. Uh, yes, you should all have one die of hunger unless you drained a person to death upon waking up. Okay. No. <laughs> Those are fourth generation Bostonian rats. They had character. They stay. <laughs> The rats Besides, are also how paying else am rent. I supposed to learn my secrets? <laughs> the rats are also paying rent. They have a separate contract. Yeah. Uh, no, they're not. That doesn't make any sense. I have animals. It does. Just pat animals. Isabel awkwardly on the back. <laughs> to, be fair, to be fair, Bart's animal can, plus the fact that Vern is fully aware that Ratkin are in this city because Nosferatu and Ratkin do have business dealings. The two of them are fully aware that there are rats in here that are perfectly capable of negotiating their contracts. Bart may have been surprised the first time he discovered that a rat was able to negotiate his own contract, but so long as he was civil about it, the rat was willing to work with the contract. And Ratkin are very, very are surprisingly good tenants. G given our pre our pre stream conversation, I'm not saying you have to have a Munchmausen show up, but if you do, out of character, I'll be thrilled. Whatever the hell happens to Charisse, there is an, a bright orange rat that is three foot tall. What? Uh, uh, remind me again, uh, ones don't cancel out successes? They do not. They and... are just, so long as it's on a regular die, a one is just nothing. Okay. A and... one is only a concern on a hunger die. Okay. Where it is a bestial failure. And standard diff is six or seven? Six. Oh, okay. Then that <laughs> is... Nine all count as one success. Tens count as two. Five successes looking for secrets. Because right, while they're fighting about rents, Charisse is going to give in to her compulsions. Mm. As you widen your pupils and extend your Malkavian senses, uh, you hear the sound of padded feet on the floor above you. Little light for a dog, maybe a cat. You do hear the subtle scritching in the walls, a rat here or there. Not surprising in any major metropolis, really. Um, but whether or not there's actually a... Uh, oh, I will say this. It does sound like there's a pipe in the wall that might need to be replaced. There's a little bit of a rattle, and you think the water flowing through sounds a little clearer there than it should. Might be rusting a bit thin. Okay, remember what I said about all the visual clues as well? Yes, I was about to ask... Okay. <laughs> Kill so, you. Bart, do you have a hidden safe that may have left scrape marks or seams for Charisse to find? I'm not just going to assume that you have one, especially since you know how Charisse is, and a hidden safe would be the first thing she'd look for. Actually, uh, was he th it, was he there for uh, that scene? I was not. You all talked about it. Uh, no, I wouldn't put one in here yet because I've only owned the building for a week. Okay. Okay. So no, you, you notice scuff marks from where furniture may have been put in, but no scuff marks indicating that something has been regularly opened, closed, no seams. So if Bart's got a secret safe, it's not here. Clever boy, don't meet me where you have your secrets. Actually, that pipe in that wall will probably need replacing soon, so I dare say that rent should not increase until the landlord affix it fixes things that need fixing. Already got a work order. <laughs> it in, passing it off to a minion. What kind of minion? <laughs> Human, I fuzzy. Hand it off to someone else. Oh, okay. So not <laughs> you. You you wrap on the desk and a. Um... Are you the sort of person to make ghouls? 
uh, other would than you, hellhounds. Or would you just hire humans and maintain the masquerade? I would probably hire humans more than I would. Uh, if, we were, if it were something important, it would be a ghoul, but most of the time it's probably just minions yeah. of the human persuasion. Then you call in for uh, for some human or another that you've hired to work as an attendant at this point in time. They come, they take the work order. It'll be processed first thing in the morning because at this hour, all of the repair you know, companies are currently closed because, you know, people went home to sleep at reasonable hours and didn't have all of their establishments open till 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Nerds. <clears throat> Does that, really? Actually, where's the hellhound? Is he here? Oh, he's here. Because Sharice's next question Aches. is, Aches. oh wait, of course there are pets allowed in this building. Yeah. Hello. She has zero <sighs> animal can, so she just says hello to the puppy wherever he is. Because he's a good boy. He's a good boy who eats snake people. We all love him. He's the most important member of the party. It's yeah. true. All hellhounds are good hounds. You don't realize it's Fifteen of ten. I am just the accessory to the to Ace's character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, his name is Ace. Yay! Ace the bat hound. <sighs> please that give us. Please watch. Much. Watch the vods of the previous streams, and please make us Ace fan art. We need it. Like yes. we need it. Ace is the best. If there were any good at drawing dogs, there would already be Ace fan art. But alas, I am not. Oh. So, anyway, right. Ace fan fiction. So another. Uh, on to other subjects. Uh, are we going to Europe? I was thinking about it. So was I. I mean, I haven't looked there yet, so I might as well. And if it's the know, only lead I have right now, safety in numbers. You know, I would, I would help, help happily help others who help me safely travel abroad. So yes. I'm fairly adept at uncovering secrets. If there are secrets to be found. Indeed. There are, and there are certainly some secrets to be found, after all. Well, normally with normally with the lineage, you don't, well, most, you usually have more than, more than, usually the lineage is a little more than immediate sometimes, but. Thirteen. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of. Yes, it's definitely something I've noticed from talking to other ventures that most of them have uh, a lineage that extends beyond the immediate in terms of, uh, well, still living, so to speak. That's probably why I keep thinking you're a Toreador. I'm, I'm sorry, no offense meant. It's because you don't go on and on about your lineage every time you present yourself. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I do when I, I, mean, I do Not to say you have stations, to keep I... not doing that, but yes, it's, it's important to know where one comes from. Yeah, I, I mean, I know where I come. I, I know, I know where I come from. I know that you're. I know that I, I have the list of names, and like I, I, I say the list of names, which I only have one written on my sheet. But like, here's the thing: everyone beyond Johann von Kriegelstein is dead, and I don't know why. And he's very, and he is unwilling to tell me why. And I'm very curious as to what's going on there. So I, well, I mean, so I assume you've you've asked, and he just won't reveal, or he. Let's just say that he's. Let's just say that the lie is different every time, and at this point, I find it tiresome. Mm. His name is Von Kriegelstein. Yes, his name is Johann von Kriegelstein. He's a he's an, he's Austrian. Well, it was Austrian. It's far more for, formidable sounding in Austrian, I assure you. It's still Kriegelstein. It's the same word. Well, it's a, it... oh, charming man, as a but keeps his own counsel, and mostly mm. we operate in our own circles these days. Hmm. On one hand, he might be protecting you. On the other hand, not knowing what's coming to bite you in the face isn't always a help. Mm -hmm. Knowing or not should be your call. Mm. My call? Not his. Oh, I thought you meant like you... as opposed to your. I thought you meant as like opposed to your call because no, obviously, because obviously, if you're going, I'm going. 
I'm just saying if you asked, he should have told you. Seems unfair that he didn't. I've made my peace I've made my peace with certain people omitting information and omitting things because they don't think I'm they don't they don't think that I can handle it or whatever, or they don't think that it's information they don't think this information can be trusted with me because I'm too flighty or too uh, I don't know, or it's not something I need to know. Let's ignore my psychological problems right now and like focus on other things. Listen. Regardless of that fact, if it weren't, I, I would I would consider it, it I, I while this is something I'm interested in finding out, it's certainly something that I could do without him if it ends up. It's a fascinating story. But ultimately the reason that I would really be coming here would be to support you. After all, you're After all, I think we could. After all, I think we offer a certain set of. I offer a certain set of skills that, and you offer a certain set of skills, and we work together better than we did a, than we do a bunch. Probably don't say it enough, but I do appreciate you, Izzy. Is <laughs> Isabel is just openly beaming. So yes, that's that's three for going to Europe. Um... Mr. Killian, are you interested, or would you rather stay here with your own holdings and expand I'm, expand your empire? I believe I can leave my holdings in at least for a little bit to uh, keep an mm -hmm. eye on themselves. Ace can watch things, can't you, Ace? Ace probably could manage my uh, business empire for a while. However, Ace Ace starts to nudge you because he wants you to move out of the way of his out of the desk. <laughs> Does he want to sleep under the desk again? No, I think he wants the chair, dear. <laughs> when, when you slide That's out of the his chair now, Ace, Ace puts his paws on the desk, grabs the pen with his teeth, and then proceeds to sign your name on a bit of paper. I'm now going how? to see how well he does this. Ace, you never <laughs> cease to I think amaze Isabel me. Is, I think Isabel is staring. I think everybody is just staring at this best dog. If this if this goes anywhere near as well as Ace World previously, it's going to be a flawless forgery. John, Ice Gods have spoken. You're not sure if Ace signed that or you did, aside from the fact that your pen is currently covered in a bit of slobber. Hey. He does then put it back into the holding thing and then sit down and look up at you. How big is Ace, by the way? I'm, 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 I don't have a good sensor. How big is Ace? Ace is a mastiff. Yeah, okay. He's a big, he's a big boy. That was yeah. a lot of successes. I think, I think there's just sort of speechless watching a dog perfectly forged her smart signature. I'm gonna look between the desk and Ace and Killian and be like, you know, buddy, you're gonna someone's, real someone's more. gonna come for your empire here. Is this? You should watch your back, okay. Mr. Killian. If I didn't literally watch it happen in front of me, I would assume that you were lying about the I would assume that you were lying. I, so we're keeping so, this all to ourselves, right? Everyone else did just see that, yes? Given my okay, own yeah, family, yeah, I need no, to ask. This isn't just oh, yes. you on this one. Okay. We, we saw the dog just sign a man's name and a perfect forgery. Yeah, he gets really get real dangerous once he learns how to read. Are you are you so sure that he can't? Uh, we keep uh, going over the uh, best. Uh, I keep trying to get him to uh, read uh, Ulysses, and he's not getting it yet. Oh, well, are you sure he only he speak he reads English? Have you tried any translations of Ulysses? Or we're talking Wait. James Joyce Ulysses, though, aren't we? I mean, no one, it, <laughs> no one Wait, gets has that, that even one. been published yet. I forget. <laughs> I think so. Chat, yeah, if you I'm, haven't I'm noticed, it's the nineteen twenties. Yeah, I. I have a different James Joyce novel that I read earlier this semester, but depending on how far into the twenties we are, December oh, yes. I mean, nineteen twenty. So if we are in the nineteen twenties, I think we're in twenty one. I mean, there we so go. so Ulysses is like a new <laughs> hot item, I guess. Yeah. I mean, Ulysses is very popular, but it's not for everyone. Have you tried maybe the Odyssey? Uh, maybe any <laughs> translation, maybe the original Greek. No, he doesn't like Greek. Popular novels oh, I'm sorry, of 1920. Dear. I don't know what novels I would know about in the 1920s. Um, I have a nice translation. I have a nice Latin version of Ovid at home. Would you like to try that, Ace? 
he also doesn't turn pages by himself. Mm -hmm. I strongly doubt that. Ace walks over to one of the bookcases, nudges, uh, nudges something aside, grabs something with his teeth, and comes back with a um, with one of the uh, with a dime store western novel, and oh. sets it down on the floor, and then looks at all of you, looks at Bart, looks at the novel. Look, the patron will get here next week. <laughs> Pushes open the cover with his one paw, and then looks down at the page. Seems he's trying to prove a point. Aww. He's trying. Bear in mind, when I've been going this and this, that has been Ace nodding and shaking his head. Oh, I got that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've never seen a dog roll its eyes before. Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Killian has. Bart. The rest of us have not. But when Bart says he's trying to prove a point, you watch as Ace rolls his eyes before taking the book and putting it back on the shelf. Like I said, the paper will get here next week. <laughs> of course, if we're going to Europe, you won't be here to use it. I'll totally read with you. <laughs> Might I suggest the Bobsy Twins? Uh... Well, there's nothing wrong with liking cowboy stories. I ginger, she gingerly pats him on the head if he allows it. <laughs> oh, he's a good boy. I have no animal, Ken. This is a new experience for me. Or a really, really old one. I'm just making it smarter. I wonder if he would like Agatha Christie. Because that's apparently out at this time and is a, a thing. Is it really? Yeah, I thought she was a little later than that, but nope. maybe I'm wrong. Uh, the Mysterious of Fair and Styles by I'm literally just I literally just looked up a list of 20 books that define the 1920s because I don't fucking know anything about the 1920s. I have a handful on my shelf actually, and one here, but you know. Yeah. The Mysterious oh. Fair and Styles by Hello I Kitty Obsessed. In 1920. Is, this dog is about to be learning from the Great Depression in like ten years. I'm like, this dog might cause the Great Depression for all we know <laughs> in ten years. Oh, he's, fucking Ace turns evil market. and crashes the stock market. <laughs> no, 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 no. When the Great Depression happens, Ace will once again roll his eyes and think to himself, if Stupid only I could convey to them all just how badly they were ruining the system. This is why the world belongs to the dogs. Ca the, the humans are destroying themselves with capitalism. They should just let us run everything. We'll keep them safe and contained. All they have to do is feed us and give us scritches. Has Call of the Wild been published yet? <laughs> oh, anyway. No. Anyway. So, um... Yes, I, I suspect if you left Ace in charge, it might not be your empire once you came home. Hmm. hmm. Not, sure which one I'd ra not sure which one I'd rather have as my uh, superior. Uh... You have to think about that? No, I don't. It's absolutely Ace. <laughs> He charges more for rent. Oh. <laughs> Ace starts nuzzling up against Bart's leg. Yes, Ace gets petted heavily, as he is a good dog. <laughs> All right, so, and I suppose we're going to Europe in a dirigible? Full of hydrogen. Or sounds that way. Hmm. I'm really fascinated by those things. I'm rather dismayed by them. I am. Uh, since last game, Sharice now has a dot in science and a skill spec in chemistry. <laughs> She's. Hmm. A balloon full of hydrogen. What could possibly go wrong? A lot. A, an awful lot could go wrong. When did Hindenburg happen? Probably That's way later. soon. That's... <laughs> I don't no, know. I don't know. This oh, is the, the huge the humanity! <laughs> what? <laughs> See, this is the problem. My, like, it in real life cultural knowledge. 1937. 
Okay, so yeah. Hasn't happened yet. Yep, yeah, so we, so yeah. Isabel is only, has nothing but like, just this thing, thinks this is the coolest thing. The problem with it, of course, is the thing has windows, right? Mm. I don't actually know. The thing well, has windows, and like, it's, uh, what's the inside of a dirigible look like? I actually don't know. I, it depends on the model design. This one is designed to be a luxury liner, effectively. Mm -hmm. So it will have multiple tiers. Uh, we'll have private rooms. We'll have full 360 degree windowed uh, dining halls and such. See, that's the thing. That's the problem. The 360 degree windowed dining halls are, you know, not great when you die if you see a sun. Well, I would also we like won't to be awake during the day. I would also like to remind you that this that this particular company is willing to work with you because it is a kindred owned enterprise. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just not remembering a lot of things because it's yeah. been it's been a while. Yeah, it has. That's this is why, why I'm asking I... these questions out of character so that Isabel doesn't come off like an idiot. It's just Ari comes off like an idiot, and I'm fine with that. I can be an I I can be an idiot, but Isabel needs to be an idiot in character and not yeah. an idiot because I don't no, know it's, things. It's a kindred run enterprise, so they'll make a point to ensure that you are in sunproofed rooms mm -hmm. as you rest during whatever daylight is encountered during your travel. Gotcha. gotcha and gotcha. they could probably schedule a flight uh, around minimizing exposure to the <laughs> sun. I mean, you could choose never to leave your rooms and just take advantage of the uh, of the room service if you didn't want to deal with people. Are you telling me that, it, that I'm going to have a, a, a massive night, like, view, night view of just the open air and sea and you don't want me to, like, look at that? Of course, at the middle of the night, I'm going to, like, take a look at that. You're sure you're not a Toreador, right? <laughs> no, I, I'm not a Toreador. I just like it. Just because I'm a vaunter doesn't mean I don't like adventure. I mean, she's a very young Ventrue. Let her, her have her adventures before she settles down. I guess. But, um, yes, yeah, so I suppose we're going to take the prince up on... So was the... Yes, the prince offered to get us in contact with transportation, mm -hmm. I believe. The prince was the prince has connections through an arrange through a business arrangement with this company so that the dirigible during its initial test runs would go from Boston to London rather than bring any more business to New York. <clears throat> The Sabat live in New York. No one wants to go there. King is also from New York. Oh. There's a reason he's in thought. Boston now. <laughs> On second thought, uh, let's not go to New York. It's a silly place. It's a very silly place. <laughs> Two of us are there now, and it is a very silly place. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, I was hoping to continue. Well, I guess if I don't find any clues in Europe, I could. I just would just come back to Boston. Mm. Well, of course we're coming back to Boston after all this is done. Yes. Yes, we are. Uh, all right, then. I guess we should uh, send a message to the prince or his um, secretaries and we'll get this set up. I forget how to do that. My There's brain a... fog is very bad today. There is a phone in Bart's office. All right. Yay. Yes, because he is wealthy and connected enough to not have to deal with a house phone. And, I, oh, yes. I believe this was one of the two of you who was setting this up. So if you would like to make a call to uh, the prince's uh, people, by all means. Bad microphone. Does Vern wish to take advantage of the Nosferatu operators? Sure. Okay. I'm not sure I'm qualified to be holding a conversation with the Prince of the City. Uh, I could do it. I mean, okay. It's, all right. Yes, all right. I, 
pick up the phone and I dial the nos uh, the the you, you Shrek pick up board. The <laughs> you you pick up the phone and this initially connects you to a regular operator. Yes, hello, and how may I direct your call? Uh, what is what is the code for the Shrek? Uh, you would you would basically say that you want to place a call to um, to the address at which the to at which the prince holds his abode, and then it would normally go to another operator. It's just that in this case, the operator would connect to would not be part of the regular system. It would wind up connecting down into the Shrek board, which is sort of like pseudo tied in because they sort of control the phone company, but don't but they don't control all the members of the phone company so the operators are just there plugging things in and you know they're having conversations here and there but when they connect to the shrek board the <laughs> shrek board the, the, the shrek net can basic the shrek net knows how to ensure that the operator doesn't hear the conversation except for you know the operators who are supposed to hear the conversation because the nosferatu need to hear every conversation they just like need to make sure the mortals don't Yes, it's could like, you connect me to 987, please? 987, one moment, please. Yes, and then 50 up. years, this will be the in, in 80 years, this will be the ShrekNet, but right now we have the phones. <laughs> right, now, right now you just plug it into it and just you immediately start hearing Smash Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody! <laughs> connect through. And then uh, coming on the other line going, Yes. Uh, How many your call? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, could you connect me to the office of the prince or his um, his uh, secretaries? I should specify. I doubt Run he's going to take my call directly. Running it through to the house phone now. Thank One you. moment, please. You sit there, rings two or three times before a voice comes on. King Estate, how may I help you? Uh, yes. Um, uh, uh, this is Sharice Laurie. Uh, myself and a few other kindred of the city were talking to the prince after, um, after rescuing his professor friend. And he offered uh, to connect us with, what was the name of the company again? The Disablers. The Disabla is one of the blood is one of the people involved mm -hmm. with it. The it was perhaps unimaginatively named Nightflyer Enterprises. Yes. Uh, he's he could connect it to someone with connect us to someone within Nightflyer Enterprises to help us book safe passage to London. Uh, if that offer is still on the table, uh, if someone could give me a phone number or a location in which to meet this contact, and then we can get, we can put together our travel plans without bothering the prince any further. The master is currently engaged in conference with his knights. Indeed. I will along your message. Very well, yes, as, as I suspected. This is a very trivial matter, but we do need the phone number or address or what have you. But all right, thank you very much. I uh, will inform him at his earliest convenience. All right. Um, if you could send that to uh, what? What is the number here? Seven. <laughs> if you could. Uh, once that information is, is available, if we could forward it to number 007, Boston area, uh, yes, uh, we'd be much obliged. Thank you very much. Click. Mm -hmm. Yep, so the prince is busy talking to his knights, so he'll get back to us, or someone will. Probably someone not the prince will, because princes are very busy. Have you ever gone on a large vacation somewhere else? There's a lot of things to pack. Oh, I know. I'm more or less on a long vacation now. I just okay. wasn't expecting to cross the pond this early. I figured eventually. Technically, I'm from New Orleans. 
Well, in, in this life. Anyway. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, I told them to, uh, and I guess they'll contact us here. That might be tonight. It might be tomorrow. But we'll see. It depends on how busy the prince is. Yeah. But ultimately, I would I would assume that one of his underlings or a primogen or a seneschal or something would contact us in his stead because I'm sure they all also know these people. Probably. And he'd just say, go, minion for me. Hello, primogen to minion. <laughs> it's good to be the prince. Yeah, not every <laughs> primogen is going to want a minion for a prince. <laughs> Um, yes, that's got murder. Yes, that that's how that's how a lot of princes get overturned. Hashtag Camarilla life. It's well, let's be fair, life. That's, that's also how a lot of Empire. parents get thrown over too. How what? Uh, Sabat prince bishops. equivalents for the Sabat. Oh yeah, bar barons. Yeah, yeah. They're not letting us be violent enough. Yeah. Anyway. No, we just want more power. Um, so yes, you all continue to have your very pleasant conversations uh, and then move on to your uh, places of rest or places of business or both in Isabel's case. Um, oh, hello, guest in Ari's feed. Yeah, that's, my, that's my sibling. Ah, yeah. He just also lives here. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi. Yeah, just some person <laughs> they, have, they, have you. they have patted me on the head and are now leaving. <laughs> yep. Uh, so you all go to your places of rest for the uh, for the day. And upon oh actually you all need to make me rouse checks when you wake up, please. So roll one D ten and just tell me if it is a success or a failure. Is a single die? Yes. I roll a ten. Does that make it an extra win? Or just It means you don't wake up hungry. Ooh, yay. I also rolled a 10. Go team. Yeah. Okay, I rolled a D, 2. D5 dice simulator. What was it? D5 okay. dice simulator. So There it is. I am. Did you make a point to drain a person and bring yourself uh, to murder? Nothing. I, I, I did not roll a success, so I guess I do wake up hungrier. Yeah, well, here's a question. Did you drain someone to bring your hunger to zero before you went to sleep? No. Okay, then both Vern and Isabel wake up at two hunger, whereas the two of you wake up at one hunger. <sighs> oh. So what you're saying is, during this European trip, I can write the beloved children's novel, The Hungry Hungry Nosferatu? <laughs> I mean, depending upon who you ask, it might be considered a masquerade, but yeah, do absolutely. I want, do I want to Diablo Rise Bart? <laughs> <laughs> just to okay. make him stop doing that <laughs> well it will, will would would Killian be writing it or would Ace be writing it probably oh, <laughs> almost certainly it would be Ace so double masquerade breach there no, let's gonna... double down on this it's... see we. Th this is the problem the internet doesn't exist yet and on the internet nobody knows you're a dog no one has to know in this world either. Oh. To be fair, it wouldn't be the first time that somebody denoted a pet as a co-author. This is true. Thank you, Fadior. Uh, Fadior <laughs> just bought a GM plus one. So the GM's pool is ten. The player pool is four. Not that we've rolled anything, because we've mostly been role-playing, but, you know. Yep. Yay, vampire. That That is the dominant portion of the role-playing game. So, yes. And if anything, I'll probably just want... Well, I mean, an Ace doesn't need any more plus ones. The dice already love Ace. Seriously. <laughs> Ace naturally attracts critical successes like you wouldn't believe. He's a good boy. That's how it is. Like, I realize you think that you, you should be paid more in this contract. However, you have to have a human to go collect the checks, and I barely qualify as that. So, for now, this is how this works. Your money's going into your retirement fund and your uh, your stake budget and your other uh, uh, personal walkers. 
Oh. Isabel is never quite sure if Bart is messing with her or not. Given Ace's <laughs> responses, probably not messing with her. Probably not, but she's never sure. Not unless Bart took an extensively long period of time to train Ace a very specific way. <laughs> okay. Let's be real. Isabel is convinced that she's important enough that Bart would do that to mess with her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna oh. just let you keep believing that. Uh, and then one day Ace reveals he's really been a werewolf this whole time. That's what I'm wondering out of. <laughs> and then character. we all get killed. And then we just all get killed because it turns out we have a werewolf. Like I don't, I don't think you shouldn't ghoul a lupus, but I don't no, think you can't world. ghoul a lupus. <laughs> You can attempt to ghoul a lupus. It does not end well. Yeah, that's not an easy trick. There are only a handful of kindred who have ever succeeded in doing that. Those kindred were then summarily killed by all other nearby kindred because they needed to make sure that ghoul didn't get anywhere. And is one of the handful of occasions when changing breeds and kindred have all actually agreed on the same thing. Those two need to die. Sounds like a plot hook to me. I mean... Oh, does, does V5 <laughs> still allow that, that one in a hundred chance of successful abomination creation? Which is when you embrace a werewolf. To be fair, they don't talk about werewolves a lot, aside from giving them generic stat blocks for enemy units. Hmm. Maybe we'll see when the werewolf book eventually releases. Something. The 30th of February, next year. Oh, oh, never mind. It has a release date. I, I love how Ari still just... Oh, really? That's fantastic. Thank you, Ari. Yeah. 30th of February. Yeah. <laughs> oh, god damn it. <laughs> We're all very tired. Can you tell, chat? The holidays has begun. I'm glad I... I don't know why. My brain... It, it just took me a second to parse that that was... Because the problem is that I don't actually care about the werewolf date, so like when I just heard a date and I was like, okay, cool. I mean, to be fair, there's no so reason for February for 30 days. All you had to do was not make some of these other months 31. Yeah. Thanks, just, Agu thanks Augustus. Just take two months to make them 30, and now February's 30 days long, too. Also, move January and February to the end of the month. So that October is the eighth month! Okay. Oh, it's not. But it, can't. it should be. But it's not. <laughs> it would be if we move January right and February to the eighth. Sorry, there's also a. It guess. can't. It cannot be <laughs> January because it's it's Janus, the god of doorways. That has to be the first month. There's a reason for that. Yes. The problem lies in July and August because they're named after emperors who had to ruin the whole year. <laughs> Fucking. God damn Excuse it, me, why didn't this. you pour yourself a bowl? I've told you a billion times! Oh, Every damn time! Oh. Thanks, Eowyn. Okay. So she was mad that I took the goldfish. <laughs> back uh. to vampire. <laughs> the goldfish just pour a bowl! <laughs> back to vampire. Do I need what? to leave now? Am I kicked out of the, of no. the podcast after that happened? <laughs> That depends on how many other people are going to wind up coming into your background and screaming into your mic. Normally that's not supposed to happen. I didn't expect <laughs> it to happen. Normally people don't do uh, that. One, one time Dracus's brother came into their room while they were streaming. I was the only other person on stream to notice. So when their feet moved up, raising the sheet behind them on the bed, everyone yeah. else in the stream was freaked the hell out. Dozing it and it was hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> it was like, Ghosts. <laughs> And I'm like, what? Like, oh, yeah, that's, that's just my brother. That's Drax's brother. I saw him come in. It's my local he's, haunter. He's not. You're, you're haunted. Are you a Gengar then? I don't know what that means. It's a Pokemon. Wow. It's a, okay. The, the evolved yeah. form, the evolved former haunter is just called Gengar, and it's like okay. a little purple fat thing. It's like the most. I love Gengar so much. Let me show you Gengar because it is the and, cutest anyway, Pokemon. Anyway, vampire. Then yes. Vampire now. Anyway. Pokemon in 27 minutes when we're on break. Vampire. Or, you All know, between really scenes, on. because, Moving on. yeah. <laughs> Moving on. So, some of you wake up not any hungrier than before. Some of you wake up hungrier than before. The older two vampires know how to manage their their blood calories. 
apparently. <laughs> All of you are greeted by having slipped under the uh, the door frames of where you rest or having been handed to an associate or employee who reports to you upon your awakening uh, an envelope containing within it a ticket for a private room on the night on the um, on the next voyage from Boston to the London landing station of the Night Flyer One. Uh, the Ooh. date scheduled for the next departure will not be for a few weeks yet because you all opted to hold off on its maiden voyage. So it will be returning in a few weeks to come grab you all, giving you time to run about, handle any affairs, get whatever else you might require. I mean, to be fair, uh, I I don't want to be on a ship full of hydrogen. Let them do the maiden voyage without me. <laughs> you know, just very reasonable and logical of you. But it's only after the maiden voyage is successful that other people want to overthrow it because it's getting in the way of their budget. You know, that's then the funny they, thing. That, is, uh, they didn't think it would work at first. That would be really funny if, if the Malkavians were the only ones going, do you think there's something wrong with this? And everyone ignores them because they're the Malkavians. It's a, sp it's a balloon full of hydrogen. This is level one chemistry in 1920. What? What? Silly Malkavian, you're just getting in the way of progress. No, I'm not. And then when the, the Heidenberg does happen. Heidenberg, then, my favorite. <laughs> Heidenberg <laughs> happens, they're like, Malkavians, why didn't you warn us? <laughs> we don't technically have the Cassandra flaw, but somehow we do anyway i did i told you hindenburg 27 years ago i told you hindenburg i didn't know what you meant 27 years ago because i Mal forget that you all see the future and you're not always clear about how far in the future you're seeing well it's not like the future tells us we have to figure it out by context clues i mean to be fair my future vision showed me the actual date and everything i saw the newspaper in the future vision then why didn't you say anything because I wanted you all to burn. <laughs> I mean, that's not how I do things, but I also can't can't hold that against someone because Malkavians are not very well respected in most cities. One of the reasons I hit Boston first. Yay. Anyway. Yes, so... You all have a couple of weeks to get your affairs in order and pick up any gear or equipment that you wish. Uh, if there's any particular role-playing you wish to do, we can cover that now. Otherwise, we would simply jump ahead to you being brought aboard and setting off on flight. So does anyone wish to do any role-playing with anyone in particular? Speak with any other clanmates, people in the city, have a chat with Professor Ormond, the prince, anything? Uh -huh. hmm. I would very much uh, just like to talk with my fellow Malkavians about. So it's Boston to London, is is yes. the trip is the route. I haven't been to London since I was breathing, so I rather need to talk to my my clan my family to find out what it's like now, and okay. what new dangers there are that I didn't understand existed when I was breathing. <laughs> yep. Aside from just avoiding family. Yep. That I have not kept track of. That could be awkward. Yep. Uh, so Fine. you go to, to speak to other Malkavians. Um, What's London like these nights? Um, never spent much time there myself. Had a friend there. Queen Anne's a little... Uh, very... Uh, very, very venture, if you know what I mean. Proud descendant of Mithras. Oh, there's a there's a kindred Queen Anne, as opposed to the actual Queen Anne, or yes, the human the, Queen Anne, I should say. Yeah, she's the prince of the city, but she likes to refer to herself as Queen Anne. I mean, a, she's she's very venture. All right. Um. Hmm. All right, so um, so it's it's a Camarilla city, London itself. Uh, effectively. Oh dear. 
It's it's Camarilla, but I mean, really, they're most of the population of London are in the cult of Mithras. So if Mithras ever woke up from torpor and said, Kama, what now? No. No, they would all just follow him. All right, I'm a little bit embarrassed now because I technically come from this country, but I have no idea what you're talking about. It sounds terribly interesting if you could explain to me how there is an ancient kindred named Mithras or named after Mithras sleeping under London. That would oh. maybe be good for me to know. Is. 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 All right. Yeah. Mithras, Methuselah, fourth generation kindred. Oh, goodness. He, the founder of Londinium. All right. So when humans talk about a god named Mithras, they're actually talking about a Methuselah that they've yeah. deified because they're humans. Yeah. Let's be honest. It's not Humanity. the first time they've done that. Oh, oh. Earth, ladies. Let's, let's be honest. Uh, unfortunately... Uh, some Greek and Roman deities were either kindred mages or were uh, individuals that were unfortunately beset upon by um, individuals. Well, let me just put it to you this way. Um, the god of doorways did have two faces. He didn't have them by choice. Oof. Oh, isn't someone cut him? Oh, yes. As in a shemise grafted a second face onto his head. Interesting. I didn't... Yes, huh. and then and then connected all sets of eyes so that he was constantly seeing out of both sides at the same time. It apparently took him two hundred years to finally learn how to process all that information. Without you know, or or at least it looked, took him two hundred years to stop being crazy. Well, so mean... the stories go. I've never seen the guy. I think he's dead now. Well, I mean, he'd be a terrible masquerade breach otherwise. That's fair. I mean, he could have just holed himself up somewhere. Or he's in torpor, but... I mean, I don't ancient, exactly Roman vam ancient Roman kindred probably has people to do things for him. Or yeah. them. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of disturbing the... Uh, of disturbing sleeping kindred that are potentially that old. Right. Usually they're... Um, usually they're at the point where feeding on mortals isn't what gets them up in the morning. What's, what's that saying? Uh, never tickle a sleeping dragon. Yeah which is especially appropriate when dealing with many Methuselah. Yes, better to just ask the secretary, uh, so what's that all about? Oh, good, I will walk away now. Yeah, so, um... Investigate this from afar. I yeah, like secrets, but not when they're trying to eat me. So, the prince of... All right, uh, so... Of the prince of the city is a descendant of Mithras. The primogen of the Ventru is a descendant of Mithras. I mean, to be honest, I think most Ventru in the city are a descendant of Mithras. They'll be more than happy to recount the whole bloodline straight back to their blood god. Uh, yeah, he he's one of those Methuselah who has a whole religion associated with him. It's a strong... I mean, they have members elsewhere, but they're, they're big congregations in London. Okay, so it's de facto a Camarilla city that follows the traditions, but maybe they just are sort of doing their own thing. Mostly. And, and just um, paying lip service to the Camarilla. Yeah. Because and at least they're not Sabbat. Uh, yeah, mostly. And then, of course, there's the whole... No one's going to fight them for the power center of London because you don't know how much kindred blood spilled in the streets is going to wake up Mithras, who has been known on occasion to do things while in torpor. Do, do things? All right, so... I need to know. You, you may just... Mithras you can't be a... vague with me. You know this. I keep asking questions. I can't stop. Mithras is a rare case. Like, even we Malkavians don't understand how how he gets so close to the network. His aspects are so strong. Oh, goodness. You, you ever tap into the network and you feel like there's that extra set of eyes that doesn't really belong there? Just one? That's just... <laughs> Well, when you're in the network, you're constantly dealing with all the Malkavians. But you know when you feel like there's one pair of eyes that just doesn't belong there? Ha. 
Bye. <laughs> You've noticed it once or twice. All right, but once or twice. But I mean, it's the Madness Network. It's not supposed to make sense. That's Mithras. That goodness gracious! There's a Vantru sparing on the network. That no, that's awful. His, his mastery of Auspex is so strong, he can almost tap the network, which is you know not supposed to be a thing other people can do. But any time that London's been in danger while he's been torpored beneath its streets, London has somehow always managed to survive. By the damnedest situations, miracles happen, the people of London suddenly become very strong or very determined, and suddenly London endures. Mithras doesn't need ghouls. Mithras, supposedly, is a little bit of him is in every person dwelling in that city. So he's gestalted himself using auspex on the whole of London. Kind of. I am terrified and insatiably curious now, and that's not a good combination for me. I'm a but Malkavian. I did ask. <laughs> I'm insatiably curious. Every Malkavian in this room this, is insatiable. This is why I asked before I got there. In case there was strangeness that would distract me, and now I know definitely there is. Standing orders from Malkav. Don't mess with Mithras. I mean, okay. Don't mess with him, but, you know, if I happen to stumble into any information... Without waking him up. Forget oh. it. No, not at all. All right. Mithras is too dangerous. The more the network is aware of him, the more connected to the network he could potentially become. Ooh. And the last thing that anyone needs is him suddenly being able to reach anywhere there's a Malkavian. Ironically... If the Mont if the Vontru and Mars knew about what the Mulcavians have and that Mithras was part of it, I wonder that they wouldn't just destroy well, attempt to destroy him. I doubt they could. <laughs> based on what you've just told me. Oh, do you have any idea how many people have tried to kill Mithras over the centuries and millennia? Well, probably many less intelligent people because that doesn't seem to be the smart choice he held off three other methuselahs methuselah all right why am i going it, to london again okay um, i have no idea why you're going to london you just came up to me and started asking about london and oh no hold on i just touched the network huh? now I know why you're going to london okay then good to know have fun uh, oh what did they tell you i don't remember what i'm still Ma you gotta get the prince made a connection with somebody over there and you're going to and he's going to provide you with information yes yes D sorry it just sorry processing giant giant methuselah semi mulcavian -Mulca under the city okay mostly i just wanted to know because i i remembered we'll we'll be there because that's where the dirigible is touching down don't threaten the city oh no no fine Stick to the Malkavians, stick to the Ravnos. You'll probably be fine. Really? The Ravnos? Yeah, in, in... apparently Mithras doesn't consider them part of the city, so they're kind of exempted. Or at least subconsciously he doesn't consider them part of the city, so they're exempted. And Malkavians have just built up resistances because we're aware that he's always dreaming peaking. Bear in mind, he's in torpor, so it's not a conscious thing he's doing. It's just because his auspex is so potent. Oddly enough, well, I have no interest in messing with anything Mithras has going on. Good. But this may give me some interesting um, context for trying to find Mortimer, wherever he's dreaming. Go... Do your niceties with Queen Anne and leave London. Okay. Unless, 
I mean, unless you happen to like it there, by all means, stay. You want to become a member of the cult? Good for you. I advise you to spend as little time in London as possible because um, Queen Anne also doesn't smile very much on uh, Malkavians because we're not ventral. Well, I mean, that's most cities. Yeah. Um, I mean, Boston is refreshingly relaxed about our existence. Because Prince King is awesome. Well, yes. Yes, indeed. Um, I mean, most cities, I mean, the Mulca clan Mulcavian at large is one masquerade breach away from being blood hunted by the entire rest of the city. Yeah, as but soon how as we, they, they perceive us to be not useful, we'll die. Yeah, but how many 8th generation kindred managed to convince two 6th generation kindred to back his play for Prince and then has a squad of ninth generation knights that just take the sworn knee and just charge into battle heedless of their own safety. I know, I know, this is this is the Malkavian Shangri-La of the New World. I'm I am on board with Boston. We'll definitely be coming back, even though I only just got here from New Orleans. Like, this is me. New Orleans? Only uncontested Camarilla city in the country? Well, as far as I'm aware. Boston? Malkavian he paradise. It's not contested by other kindred. Uh, all right. But I mean, we don't have... Uh, at least when I was there, we did not have Sabbat problems with New Orleans. No, no. Or you're so not I read in regular canon. <laughs> yeah, you're not contested by other kindred. Mages and shape changers in the area, on the other hand. But you... They're easy I mean, enough to avoid. Yeah, they keep things pretty cool there for the most part until you start entering into each other's quarters and then you get quartered. But, I mean, the same thing happens to changing breeds when they wander into kindred territory. So, you know, it happens. Just, yeah, you know, be, be careful in London and try to avoid the... Because okay. <laughs> uh, those cultists, they're a little wacky, even by our standards. But, All uh, right, but, but it, the Malkavians and the Ravnos are friends there. I mean, not that we're never friends, but that's interesting bedfellows. I mean hang out i hear there's uh i hear there's a malkavian that's been acting as a big bridge for the two of them she hangs out uh heavy in the ravnos area hangs out with them in the malkave with uh, the rest of our clan a lot um what was her name what was her name uh mama leone that was her name mama leone according to the network very nice lady she, um, she tends to drift into the future a little further than the rest of us do. Like, to the point that she starts seeing the branches. Mm -hmm. So, you know, normally we all see the fixed points, but she sees the breaks. Um, that might be because she's, like, normal blind, but I don't know. Oh, poor dear. But uh, yeah, apparently the soothsaying Ravnos, they like her a lot. The Malkavians deal with her a lot. And um, she doesn't get in Queen Anne's way. And she might be the only thing that keeps people safe from Mithras getting inside the Malkavians there. Because uh, no Malkavian has joined the cult of Mithras that I'm aware. Uh, that would probably be bad. Okay. Um, one of our part, one of one of my companions that I'm going with is a Von True. I should pro. I should warn her. I mean, I can't guarantee she won't want to join, but then that's her decision and not mine. Which wrench? Oh no, nope, no, nope, uh, just Miss Quincy. Yep, yep, nope, caught it. She's yep. <laughs> she's very young, so she could either be very for let's join a cult. It looks like fun, or. No, that's too much authority. She's she's interesting for a Von True. They don't usually embrace for diversity the way we do. Get her a nicer dress. Oh, oh goodness. Work on her formal speak. And um, tell her she has to be the most venture venture because if she pisses off Queen Anne, none of you are making it out of London if she knows you're all part of a coterie. Is there any way we can just touch down and let... Oh, wait. Uh, out of character question. Is the guy I'm looking to see about a book in London or in... Uh, yes? Paris. Oh, he's in Paris. Do any of... 
none of us have actual business in London except that the the blimp is touching down there, right? It's Paris and Vienna that we're looking at. Yes. Yeah. Is, <clears throat> is there any way we could just pass through London without meeting the Queen? It's possible if you're quick and avoid the scourges, but much like when passing through any city, it's usually a good idea to yes. just let them know that you're passing through. It also depends on when you land. You might need to find a place to rest for the day. True. And, um, you know, usually a prince will be pretty accommodating about you resting somewhere in a haven for, you know, a day if you're just fucking off afterwards. Uh, mm. All right, so... It's better to be polite than to look like a bunch of suspicious spies passing through, because then when you come back through again, the scourges are going to prioritize you. Whereas if you're mm -hmm. just people passing through, they could probably just wave you through the second time. True, yes, because we do have to go back to London to get back to the United States. Um, all right, so... Hmm. This is... Well, see, this is why I research before I go somewhere. Um, I also researched Boston in a similar manner before I came here, but, you know, obviously the stories were far more in intriguing and exciting because, you know, the prince is, we have Prince King. But, um, all right, so Mad Queen, uh, and not in our way, but in a less helpful way. Um, all right. She is a high priestess of Mithras and prince of the city. So, do with that information what you will. Also, um, you're traveling there with um, that Bruja, Killian, right? Ah, yes. And probably yeah. Ace. His hellhound. Haven't met? Just caught an image from your mind? You should! Dog. He's such a good boy. What? <laughs> handsome dog. Anyway, um... I notice there's a lot of memories you have of him with a gun. You may want to inform him that London has very strict gun laws if you're not a citizen of England. Like England in general makes acquiring and bringing guns in very, very difficult. So if you wish to smuggle it in, he should be very careful or he should not bring a gun. Or, you know, try to get a telegraph ahead to inform mm -hmm. that um, they might need kindred aligned at customs in order to wave him through with his firearm. Uh, actually, that that was my next question. Um, so, is there any way to con to contact the court before we leave, just so they know, oh, some, some, some New World kindred are coming in to take a European trip, and so we don't just drop in and surprise them. Surprise, I assure you, we're all Camarilla. But well, not really, because neither are you. I mean, technically, but they know that the Night Flyer will be stopping in. Mm -hmm. And they know that at least half of its passengers are most likely to be kindred or ghouls. Oh, all right. Uh, I mean, it's it's a way to get kindred across safely without having to be on a boat. And then, you know, maybe being uh, asleep in your coffin when the ship happens to sink and then you're buried at the bottom of the uh, the ocean which has happened to more than a few kindred. Well, I mean, this is a boat full of hydrogen, so more likely we'd burn to death before we could sink to the bottom of the sea. Oh, you're thinking of everyone else trying to get their dirigibles off the ground. This one isn't hydrogen-based. No. Ooh. I mean, that's what they say. But that's not what it is. Apparently, there's a couple of clans involved on the board of directors of this company, at least one of which is a Tremere, who's managed to find a way to do this with blood magic. So this, so it doesn't run on hydrogen. It runs on Tremere nonsense. That's, that's not making me feel better. I don't I'm... claim to understand blood sorcery. All I know is that he's on the board of directors, apparently, and that's how they're keeping this thing in the air without the risk of it bursting into flame on all the kindred inside. And that's a uh, uh, that's apparently part of the reason that so many kindred have backed this, because the board of directors behind this whole thing is really just eight kindred. 
All right, and this is also why I ask. I'm actually more worried now, but all right. Well, I mean, it made its maiden <laughs> voyage, so proof of concept has proven itself, so. Look, it's not going to benefit any of them for this thing to go wrong. So many of these kindred are not powerful, well kindred who are going to have their names in the mud if something goes wrong. So they have taken extreme security precautions, as I hear. I mean, shit. They've got Nosferatu working security. Just hiding out there everywhere, making sure everything is nice and copacetic. Because, you know, you've got to bulk things out by having a couple of the mortals right. walking around. Because, you know, not every kindred likes to travel. As a matter of fact, so, not many. So effectively, when we touch down in London, we will have the opportunity to speak to kindred customs and ask them, uh, how do we quickly go say hello to the queen and then leave? Yeah, I mean, if you want to get a message there ahead of when the ship would send a message, I mean, there's always talking about an Osferatu. They've got connections going all the way to Europe now. That's true. Oh, yes, there's a, a young Nosferatu. Uh, yes, young Vern is going with us, so yeah. I will ask him. But, uh, all right, so... Well, I guess we'll just have to see how Quincy deals with some of this information. Uh, Which one? Oh, um, Miss Quincy, I am looking at her name on the Zoom screen. Ah! Hello? Uh, oh, yes, uh, Isabel and Vern are both going. Yes, I know. So, yes, <laughs> Isabel <laughs> needs... You sure what you were talking about? We have to have a chat. Um, all right. I don't, I don't suppose they have any problem with hellhounds in London. I mean, the Venture are one of those clans that sort of made that whole thing chic. Oh, perfect. If, if nothing else, if we let Ace do the talking, we'll be fine. <laughs> they, they treat, they treat their hellhounds like they treat ghouls. Mm. So, you know... Uh, you you start letting the dog work its charm. It's not necessarily going to go the way you want, baby. I mean, Possibly. have you met Ace? <laughs> Only the images I'm catching out of your mind. All right. Well, all, all right. So, um, all right. Thank you for all of this. Um, no problem. Save travels. <laughs> I don't suppose there are there are sleeping. Ospix monster and uh, Methuselahs under Venice or Paris. Well, the Paris, I would just assume, is the Nosferatu version of Boston because of the catacombs. I mean, There's even lot... humans know about the catacombs. Yeah, there are a lot of Nos hanging out in Paris these days. Uh, it's a big Toreador city. Um... Is it really, though? Uh, they've got a larger than average Toreador population because of all of the art and music and whatnot and you know, all of the American expats that are heading over there these days. And um, uh, Fadier because... just bought another GM plus one. Thank you, Fadier. All right. I mean, it's uh, it's not an unaccommodating city to Malkavians and fairly large Nosferatu population. But uh, yeah, it's not too horrible there. Uh, as for Venice, uh, didn't know you were stopping in Venice. Um, I mean, a lot of, uh, got a lot of those, uh, those Oh, wait, was it Venice or Vienna? Vienna. You, you oh, said I'm sorry. Venice. I'm sorry, I meant, v I meant Vienna. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm I, still I was... reeling at the, there's a giant Auspex monster under London. But don't say that, him, don't describe him I'm that I'm reeling over the fact me. that it was, in fact, th uh, six GM plus ones. Wait, what? Well, uh, well, it be it started as one, and then yeah. added five. Yeah. Now it's now it's six. Okay, so that means your pool is sixteen. John, yep. have mercy. <laughs> anyway, also or don't, the... and I'm going to redeem a ridiculous number of player plus ones. <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, he says six plus ones in his pool. I don't know what you're all worried about. We have four. 
Um, it's fine. Just hope that John keeps rolling badly on everybody except Ace. <laughs> anyway, our our uh, I did not mean for this conversation to go so long, uh, yeah. but it is now time for break. That was a fascinating conversation. Though. I like listening to it. Yeah, Laura's Laura's fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, he was mostly going to tell you about how Venice, the big problem you needed to worry about there, wasn't it the sleeping Methuselah? It was the, uh, the changing breeds and the uh, and the canals. Mm -hmm. But Vienna, uh, the dinosaurs. There are sharks. There are where sharks in the yes, canals. Yes, there's dinosaurs in the canals. <laughs> they're, they're not where sharks. They're macaw. They're 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 were dragons. Anyway, uh, oh, that's way better actually. There's but, uh, fucking our 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 <laughs> alarm for break went off. Yeah. So John, mm. you think about what to warn me about for Vienna, and then when we come back, uh, Charisse will will I guess we'll all meet up again uh, above the bar or above the yeah. speakeasy, and we'll have I, a long conversation. Yeah, I th I think we skip any planned roleplay for me, Vernon, Bart, just because that way, uh, if we do that, that's the session, and then we're done. Um, you know. Roleplay role play heavy sessions are still fun. Yes, I love roleplay heavy sessions. I prefer to have roleplay heavy sessions between the party members. Well, yeah. No offense meant to John. Your yeah, roleplay is great. Yeah, so it's just when we resume, I... uh Charisse will info dump this on the rest of the party and we'll see mm -hmm. what happens. Yeah. And we'll see if Ace has plans to become Prince of London. Ace totally has plans to become Prince of London. All right, so see you all in ten minutes. See you in ten so minutes. We... Go so, so, get yeah, a drink. I need water and ramen. Tea. I need And we're back. Hello, chatlings. We are back for the second half of our adventure, and we will end promptly at 11. Because people have demanding jobs that make them get up early tomorrow. So let's make this. I will set a timer. And yes, this is Magic Fish Radio, and we stream Vampire the Masquerade set in the 1920s on Tuesday nights, which is tonight. On Saturdays, uh, we alternate between an indie game night with just lots of one-shots and GMs, and we're looking... If you are a, an indie TTRPG writer or GM or fan and would like to run a, a one-shot game of something on a stream, like, join our Discord and talk to us about it, because, you know, all you really need to please me as producer is a steady webcam. Look, two of our players are in black and white tonight. That's fine. It's I'm, just for fun. I'm just jealous that I can't because my Zoom is being weird. I'll fight it. Ang I am the angry Kermit of this set channel. Mine up to do that. Uh, Twitch, you are not kind. I want to be in black and white. Anyway, uh, so yes, and we alternate that with Exit to Eden, which is this Saturday, which is New World of Darkness in space, 6,000 years in the future, and the veil obliterated itself. It is a wacky wacky game and i love it and i just sent everyone into an actual black and white world in the hedge but because uh they effectively lost earth that was in this setting they have no idea what their 1940s on earth are so it's a weird alien world to them good times. great yeah, if any any game setting with the head, any changeling equivalent of the hedge or the dreaming means I get to go off the rails. Yay! And it's fun. But that's Saturday. Um, and yeah, so, but tonight is Vampire. So when we last left our, well, actually, this is, no, you're the GM. This is your turn. Yes, we last left off partly through a conversation of you finding out what's going to be an issue in whatever cities you're heading to. Yes, and yes. So, uh, what what is the short version of Vienna? Uh, the short version of Vienna is that it's currently headed by a Nosferatu prince by the name of Gertruda. And uh, last you heard, she'd been having a lot of difficulty with the um, very powerful and influential Tremere, uh, and supposedly with a uh, with a local Shemise clan. Or with a local Shemise house, rather. <clears throat> Specifically Sabat Shemise, or...? 
No, she needs to say they were just in Vienna. They're effectively Camarilla aligned because Vienna at this point is a Camarilla city. So in, in this, for uh, it's been a while since I played. So in this version, Anti-Tribute, Shemisi, and La Sombra aren't that weird. Aren't, aren't any weirder than a Camarilla Ravnos? Not in my setting. Okay. I mean, the Ravnos are effectively Anarchs, but the Camarilla and the Anarchs get along at this point as by comparison to V5 and the Modern Knights, where... You know, it's Camarilla versus Anarchs. Grr, arg. Because we and, nuked the Sabbat because we didn't know what to do with them. And then they released the Sabbat book and goes, um, yeah, no, the Sabbat are still a pretty significant threat. Hi, we're and still here. So is the Inquisition, who are getting their book next year. Um, okay, so anyway. we're just kind of regretting making the Camarilla and Anarchs enemies. Um, but they still are. Anyway, mm -hmm. okay, so... Basically, everyone's out for everyone. All right. So, Vienna isn't nearly as complicated as London. Vienna is perhaps more complicated, but for different reasons. Okay. But for, like, normal mm -hmm. political reasons, not there's a giant monster asleep under the city who's trying to muscle in on the, Mal the Malk network. I mean, it's the Tremere and the Shemise, so... Uh... Eh, true. There's what is that face, John? Oh, I can't do that face. I can't make a face that that's amazing. Anyway, uh, Sharice... what do you mean the Tremere are building a 400 foot tall gargoyle? I mean, why wouldn't you? <laughs> it's so much. But don't. But the Tremere and the Shemisi would have to work together on that. Oh no. Anyway, um. Oh no! You see, the Shemisi are the ones building the human. Okay, Senate this game. Off. This game. <laughs> I Is already I monopolized like an hour of game talking to one NPC. <laughs> um, okay, and that's that. Sorry, other players, but uh, but yeah. Immediately after that meeting, Sharice is going to um, basically show up. I, I guess at this point, Killian owns the Killian is the landlord. Isabel runs the sh the, the speakeasy, so it's pretty mm -hmm. easy to just show up there and ask Isabel to call Vern in and like we should we need we need uh. Miss Quincy, I think we need to speak about our upcoming trip. Yes, I, I, of course. Like, right I now. Bart, I like to imagine Bart moved an office directly above there expressly to fuck with Isabel. Um, <laughs> but that's up to, to Bart to actually decide if that's something Bart would do. Oh, yeah. This is not my actual office, but it is the office I fuck with uh, Isabel. But... That's why there's yes. no secret save. <laughs> this office yes. is just for a show of four. Uh, for a yes, show of... <laughs> Nonsense. Assertion of dominance. For simplicity's yes. sake, I'll say I was already there as well. I think Isabel knows exactly what Bart is doing here, and I'm, I'm not sure if she's more mad that she's do that he's doing it, or if she she's more mad at herself for the fact that she knows that exactly what Bart's doing, and it still infuriates her. What would Papa say? What would Papa say if he knew she'd been outplayed by a bruja? Paul would say, what's a bruja? And then there would be a conversation about a masquerade breach. Oh. I think she means Johan, not my action. Yeah. Not yeah. Johan, not Adam. Our mortal parents have nothing to say on anything. Adam, Adam, Adam has two missing persons that he is having. A, Adam Quincy is honestly like a very sympathetic figure that I feel very bad for. But it's just... Nah. He, he wasn't a great dad, but I don't think he deserves <laughs> this. <laughs> anyway, yes, um, Miss Quincy, we need to speak yes, immediately yes, about of, our trip. Yes, of course. Is, is something the matter? Yes. <laughs> oh. oh goodness, yes. Okay, let's go. Let's go to the office. I, yes, of course. Uh, my doors. Yes, of course. After this, my door is always open to you. Oh yes, I'm sorry. I'm was. sorry to be. Uh, I'm so sorry to be so uh, up. Uh, I'm sorry to be so presumptuous, but th there's something we need to talk about right now. Uh, yes, of course. I okay. Let's go. I was hoping to schedule dinner, but I, I no, postpone that till later. We need to talk about this. No. All right. <laughs> just sort of. At some point on her... the way up the stairs, I appear behind you. 
Charisse does not seem ah, at all hello. startled. <laughs> neither, neither is Isabel. She's Jesus used to this way. by now. You're a Nosferatu. Oh, good, Vern, you're here. Let's go. Yes. Of course. Okay. I assume I think, so. I, I think that used to freak her out, but she's completely used to it by now. Charisse is a Malkavian. She's just it's... glad that Vern is actually there. Yeah, it's not a habit that he had as a mortal, so it probably was a little disturbing to Isabel for a while, and now it's not. No, this is just a, this is just this is a Vern thing. It's just Nosbros. part for the course at this stage. Nosbros. Nosbros. Like I imagine science Vern like does like the just appear out of nowhere and Isabel just like doesn't even look up and says, Oh hey, how you doing? Uh Charisse does <laughs> knock oh, on know. the door of the office if it's not just open. Uh oh yeah, yeah. But, I mean yeah, the, the door is Knock, yeah. knock, knock. All right. Um, yeah, she just walks. In. She's scurrying along in her weird little little antiquated Victorian lady uh, day dress or afternoon dress. Just yes. Um, uh, all right, everyone, sit down. Um, so I went and talked to some of uh, my local clan mates about mm -hmm. London and some of the other cities we're going to, and. Um, I was instructed to not stay in London. Is it dangerous? For you and I, quite possibly. Less so for Mr. Killi Mr.'s Killian and Quincy. Um, so, interesting thing. Uh, when I was a <laughs> human, there was a mythological figure in England called Mithras. We assumed he was some sort of Roman god who came over with the Romans. And yeah, Britain started worshipping him. him. Um, as it turns out, he was an ancient kindred Methuselah of the Venture line. Mm -hmm. And not only is he still worshipped as a god, um, the current prince of the city, who is Queen Anne, and apparently the Venture primogen... The, sa the same one or a different one? I actually... I, I've heard the name before, but I thought it would be impolite to ask. It's, I'm pretty sure it's the same one. I'm pretty sure okay, that this, okay. this Methuselah is the basis of the human myths. Oh, not Mithras. I was asking about Queen Anne. Um, oh, no, this is a different Queen Anne, but she calls herself Queen because she's a Von True. And it, she, well, fair enough. A lot of princes, like, I once heard stories of, of a city where the prince called themselves a pharaoh. To be fair, just... if my name was if my name was Anne and I happened to be the Prince of London, I would absolutely call myself Queen Anne. Why would I not do that? So, um, th but this is where it gets weird. strange again. Um, so she's the high priest. She's also the high priestess of Mithras because London oh. is, let's say, it's a de facto Camarilla city because they're not Sabbat and they're not Anarchs, mm -hmm. but they're not exactly Camarilla. Because it's ruled by a von true cult of Mithras. Okay, so... Who actually worship the Methuselah sleeping under London. Who has such okay. powerful uh, control over the discipline of Auspex that he can control people while he's in torpor, allegedly, under the city. So Contr these are the most... Dominate. These are not only the most von truiest of von true, they're also a cult. That could be worrisome. Who worships their own lineage founder, and that's gonna be strange. Mm -hmm. So I'm just the venture. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think Isabel sort of says, "Huh, that's really weird." I I never thought of. I mean, I've then again, but, but like ultimately, do we have like do we have? Does it, I don't think any of us have strong business in London. I mean, like. You're just um, passing through, right? Yeah, I'm. I my business is in Paris. Uh, and ours yours... is in and ours is in Austria. And ours is in uh, Vienna. In, uh, Vienna. So we're just passing through, but um, it would behoove us to present ourselves at court just to say hello. We are not spies, or any other kind of evil what bunch I'm... of kindred. So what I'm surprised right. about is you didn't know this earlier. Aren't you from London, or did you well, become? Did you become turned after you moved over here? I became, I was turned, uh, I was embraced in New Orleans. Ah. And my mortal father went back to London thinking I was dead. Oof, that's... So, a bit impulsive for me, yes. I'm not proud of my, not exactly proud of my, uh, my decisions in my younger days, but... 
So happens. I so it that's happens. why I went to ask other Malkavians, so what is London like now that I'm not breathing? And uh it's rather more dangerous because this mm -hmm. uh all specs uh all specs built Methuselah Von True doesn't like Malkavians very much. Mm -hmm. And um it's it would behoove me not to be in London for very long. Well, but we do need to present ourselves at court just to say hello, we are not here to ruin your day or night. Well, we just are passing speak. through. And mm -hmm. then on the return trip they'll probably just pass us through without us having to present at court. Oh, that shouldn't that shouldn't be too much trouble. I okay. mean we're all I we mean were... like what? No, 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 what we're all like we're, we're all like uh people of people of means and people who have who understand their way or understand their way around we can all make this work uh, you especially have... as the von true in our party will have to as in our traveling group uh will have to present yourself dressed to the nines and using every amount of of schmooze and etiquette at your disposal Oh, believe me, I can not... handle that. All right, just... just I right. have three dots in etiquette and four dots <laughs> in charisma. Now's not the time to forget your etiquette training. Yeah, no, I I, I have... This is something I have partially spent. Isabel, Isabel smiles and it's like, Cherise, yeah. yes. in life, I... Cherise, in... Cherise, before... Cherise, the reason that I... The reason that I might, like, present myself more informally is out of desire, not out of a lack of ability. Trust oh, me on this no, one. Uh of course no problem understood now, if this if this is what's needed to get us through london i can absolutely do any kind of schmoozing you need to do yes. believe me um, i know to believe me i know how to talk to puffed up puffed up aristocrats with more money than sense I, I know how to if, deal with if that if this is an alarming thing to say to you miss <laughs> quincy but your life may depend on it a little bit but these are no eh, life depended on it when we were trying to please mother as children anyway. <laughs> sort of. Both vampires. I'm glad to see that that turned out well for you. <laughs> <laughs> this feral little greasy dude is like, hey, I have etiquette training. <laughs> He's forgotten all of it. <laughs> Isabel has not, though. I'm sure of it. No. Sometimes you sometimes you need to grease the wheels and make things All right. make things polite and well. It pays to it pays it pays to uh, it pays to remember people's lineages and remember what what side the fork goes on and and what not. Well, and I can let them know that we're coming ahead of time too, if that would help. Yes. Um, oh yes. So um, another fun fact I discovered from my friend. Um, uh, what is the company called again? Night Flight Limited? Or Night Flyer. Night Flyer. It, it is not just overseen by a discreet presence of Kindred. Kindred are basically the entire board of directors. The dirigible is not actually full of hydrogen. It's running on blood sorcery. Oh, that's Tremere normal. blood sorcery. Sure. And I'm not sure this makes me feel any better, but well, they made their maiden hmm. flight, and it sounds like the um, if anything untoward were to happen to us on well, were to happen <coughs> to one of their ships, um, sorry, it said Tremere just... would be murdered, would would not be flying ever again. We're not just going on a dirigible. We're going on a magic dirigible. Yes. But it's Shamir magic dirigible. Yes, yes, yes. It means we would have to, like, do, does that make it, un or is Shamir, like, unreliable? Uh, I haven't really had much dealings with them. They. I mean, I'm uh, not exactly a fan. Well, uh, the Shamir and the Malkavians don't always get along. So this is a personal <laughs> issue, not a uh, reputation issue? Oh, no, lots of people don't trust the Shamir. Fair enough. Certainly, so... but they don't. Certainly, but the reason they don't trust them is because they're personally duplicitous, not because their magic doesn't work. Um. Well, depends but, on the day. But I, I mean, I, if... I will. I will say this, Sharice. You are well aware that 
a lot of the dislike for the Tremere comes they down to are the, on to us. They um is that their discipline of thaumaturgy or blood sorcery does work. It works very very well. It works Perhaps a little, a little too well. well for most kindred tastes. Um, the Salubri specifically hate the Tremere because the Tremere got their power by diablerizing. Well, yes, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. We don't need to get into the lore here. We all know the lore. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But, yes. that's, but, that's, but that's also why the Banu Hakim. Yeah. I mean, I'm also getting, <laughs> again, let's, let's keep roleplay. Uh, again, um, I mean, I'm still getting on the ship, but Yes. But ultimately... It's still the easiest way to get there. Whatever Tremere are working on this uh, enterprise, if something untoward were to happen to their customers, uh, mutual assured destruction would Indeed. come into play Just, with that board of directors and their employees. So... Well, yes, indeed. That's kind of the that's kind of the point. Businesses need businesses need to keep their reputation. That said, yes, lending in London, we will undoubt we will most likely come wherever we touch down in London, there will probably be kindred to receive us. Mm -hmm. But yes, Vern, uh if if you could through your Nosferatu contacts perhaps get a message ahead of our arrival so that at least the court knows we're coming and maybe can expedite things. So we can be merrily on our way and out of their city. Uh, we also, depending on the timing, might need a place to stay during the day. If we... I'll mention that. Yes. They may charge us cash or boons. It, it depends. It depends on the court. <laughs> but yes, we will probably have to present ourselves and it'll be very, very unusual. It'll be very strange experience, I suspect. Hmm. Um, Looks like you get more sources that way. Paris oh. is a Toreador-run city, which, to be honest, surprises me because it's full of catacombs. Like even even humans know of the catacombs. Like how could that not be an Osratu-run city? Because the humans know about the catacombs. Because the humans know about the catacombs. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. It's more like, think, think of it this way. Is it more of catacombs or is it more of a mausoleum? The former is more, the former is more Nosferatu. The latter is a little more, uh, a little more Tory. Or... I mean, I want to see the catacombs while I'm I there, am. but. <laughs> you know this as your, from your expertise as a Toreador, right? I know this because I have friends and like associates. I know this because I have met people. I don't know what you're talking about here. Uh, are you telling me that are you telling me that you don't like anytime you go to any place that is referred to as a mausoleum, there's at least one Toreador that at least like frequents the place. There are things you learn when you're when, when you're a kindred, even one as young as I. But yes, so um that's frequenting mausoleums. It's because there's a there's a certain strange apparently it's because there's a certain strange romance to it. That's yes. what I've heard, anyway. You mean yes. you're not frequenting mausoleums? I'm, I'm that's just that's beside the you. point. <laughs> oh, I'm just fascinated by the fact that the Nosferatu and the Bruja are not the problem that are, that are going to be causing London. I'm just fascinated that we are not the problem children today. Today, today, no promises on tomorrow. Right. I mean, there's Paris that we could set on fire, but it's not set fair. Paris we sure on could fire again. Well, I was advised, um, A, don't join the cult of Mithras, B, don't make them angry. And, well, that's a pretty short list of things to remember while we're in London. So but Paris enough. should be much more relaxed. Uh, Vienna has a Nosratu prince, Gertruda. Mm -hmm. Gertruda. Gertruda. Uh, who is, she's having problems with a Tremere and a, and a Shemisi house. I didn't get a lot of details. Mm -hmm. But it what? sounds like Vienna's problems are more like, just political. That's from what I what what have I what have has Johan told me? Because there's things obviously there's things he's keeping from me. But what have I learned either from gathering from his information or from stuff he's told me or stuff I've managed to like glean and convince him to tell me? He 
he managed to evade the basically wiping out of his bloodline because he wasn't in the city at the time. Um, but uh, he did mention that uh, his his house of entry was not well liked. But of course, everyone doesn't like the venture because they know we're better than everyone else. Because we're venture, we're the kings, the ru the true rulers of all of kindred kind. If ever there was a clan that was most like Cain, it was us. Um, and tell me, uh, he would have like he he definitely talks up the venture. He talks up himself. He talks up his house. Um, he mentioned uh, he would have mentioned uh, at at least a couple of points that there were. Uh, that it was almost shameful to have to serve under a uh, under a Nosferatu prince, um, but deposing her uh, frequently proved difficult. And um, there were other jealous. He, he always referred to them as jealous clans, um, and he would say one in particular, but he would never specify beyond that. Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, well, well. I know that uh, apparently my branch of the Van of the Vantry family in Vienna, there was somewhat of a, had somewhat fraught going on. I don't know everything. I don't know everything about it, and it might not even and it might not even apply to me without the fact that I've never been there. But it depends on whether the other clans will put the stock in lineage or if they will be more interested in doing business. I suppose. Will it, it be safe with... for you to go there? I don't know, but I don't think it would be like. I I, I think that it would, it wouldn't be. Listen, I don't think Johan would have told me as much as he did if I were totally unsafe. All right. Simple, like. If, because if if it was a case of if I go there, I will die, and nothing, and and I think Johan would probably have just told me that and nothing else because. What would have been the point? All right. No, there's there's something hidden there. There's something going. There's something that happened to him, and more importantly, Vern. One of the things that I out of character. What are the things I I know that like I'm looking into for Vern. I, I'm helping Vern with because I'm honestly like in character. That's what Isabel's most interested in. But I out of character don't remember, and I'm sorry about that, Dracus. Um. Vern's entire character arc is being edgy and angry at his uh, sire for basically embracing him and then fucking off somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, and somewhere else is apparently Vienna. So, besides, besides, that is ultimately less important. It is This is some interesting stuff that I could find out and ultimately takes lesser priority than Vern's potential, than what's going on in, with Vern. All right. I not to say I'm not interested, but I don't think it would be. Well, we'll this, see if we it can. It could be a yes. It, it could be a problem, or it could, or we could be blowing this out of proportion. All right. I mean, since Paris is going to be less complicated than London, uh, we can take a little bit of time there to um, do more research mm -hmm. once we're closer to Vienna. Yes, of course. You also, catacombs. You feel more for gleefully clapping his hands in the back of your mind. Uh, at what? At which bit in particular? Research. I guess. <laughs> this Gleeful is why I like him so much. Mm -hmm. Most widows are just like, yeah, the husband's gone. I get to take all the stuff. At least widows of her generation. She actually <laughs> wants to find her husband. Mm -hmm. Fucky dad. her. Hopefully there's nothing untoward about that, like programming. Anyway, dominate monks. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> in character. All right, so, um, uh, Killian, it doesn't sound like there should be, oh, um, I was also informed that England, uh, not, not the kindred court necessarily, but England is very anti-firearm. So I'm not saying don't bring one, but you're going to have to find a way to discreetly hide it in a way that mortals won't find it. And I don't know enough about guns to advise you on that. It's only illegal if you get caught. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm not not saying that. I've been around the block. Yes. R rules ex Yes. R r rules are, are rules for the... F rules are only rules if you're too foolish to get... If, if you're too foolish to... Uh, if, if you're too foolish to circumvent them. Reality is malleable at the best of times, but the rules of the kind don't always apply to us. <laughs> Nor should they. But yes, just heads up. If you, you go in carrying your usual uh, array, you, mu you will be stopped. So, just wanted to give you fair warning, because... I assumed that would be annoying if it, you were blindsided by it. Mm, we'll see what happens. Unlike other Malkavians, I understand most people don't like these kinds of surprises. Well, no, pl plenty of us do, but they then they do it anyway. I'm not good at the whole pranks thing. I just don't. Anyway, so um, does anyone have any questions that I could I could look into further? Or are we set for information? We have enough to get started. Mm -hmm. I will at some point here uh, use whatever connections, get information across the pond, let them know that we are coming. Oh, while you're doing that, would Shrink you uh, contact? <clears throat> Sorry. Would you contact one of your uh, companions and have them have a firearm waiting for me? for when I get off of the plane. What's a plane? Sure. <laughs> the balloon. No worries, Vern. No worries. You want us to look into anything in particular for him? I want to, like, look at Mr. Killy and be like, I'm lost on firearms. I'm I just going to hand you the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one well, that's fine. Dad, this is for you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll contact ahead and work out a nice assortment platter for you. That's wonderful. I carry one firearm. <laughs> no worries. I will make sure that uh, cash is sent to appropriate uh, organizations who have need for uh, such things. Uh, cash doesn't do much good for the Nosferatu, but uh, since you're buying up so much of South Boston, let's say that you ensure that uh, your buildings get renovated to allow for uh, sub basements for Nosferatu to uh, maybe sequester away in. And we'll also make sure that any information that might benefit you in the future finds its way to you before uh, most others. You uh, pick yourself a couple of uh, nice places you guys want renovated, and I will turn them into personal havens for you guys. You see, not often we get people who like doing business with us, but I had a feeling about you. I'll pass that along to the primogen. Sure. No. And we thought that other guy was a Giovanni. <laughs> <laughs> Look, kindred dealing boons. They're gonna make deals. Mm -hmm. And when they yeah. find when a Nosferatu finds someone who's actually willing to deal with them And deal with them in clear will, terms. <laughs> yeah, they will they will accommodate that one so long as they hold to their end of the bargain. I hold a grudge. I like the Nosferatu as clan. I am perfectly happy to deal with them and give them some sort of a person they can send to go talk to people that they that freak out about freaky faces. All right. So is there any other uh, individual elements that anyone wishes to get done? Um, not that I can think. I, I, I feel like there should be something that I'm... I, I always feel like I'm sort of underplaying my character because I just don't know how to play this kind of character, as it turns out. Did you buy your new dress? Yes. I, well, she's, I all right. recommend... Um, I'm not the best authority on this, but dress to the nines for, for oh, Von Trinity. 
Oh, don't worry. I I, I know I know what I'm doing there. Yeah, I say with my total of seven dice in uh, with my total of seven dice in etiquette plus charisma. Yeah. If you if you talk to the local Toreador, they own a more than a few yes, brothers, and they'll be able to hook you up with what you'll oh, yeah. need. Hey, like right. I I literally have just like gotten in contact with a group of Toreador like merchants, right? That I've been like now just working with. Now, oh, the disciples. Yeah, Maybe. the, the sun. I wonder if they have any any friends in Paris to put us and put you in contact with. Perhaps I will. That's okay. That's what I'm going to be doing. Then is Isabel's going to be trying to follow up with uh, on like the stuff that Charisse is looking for. Um. Well, my with... my stuff is assured. Um. Well. I'm also just maybe if you had friends in Paris, you could tell you what friends to make in Vienna. Yes, of course. Knowing a person who knows a person, the, 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 the mean, wheels of things. Yeah, you're yeah. a businesswoman. You yes, yes. Contacts yeah. in Paris of your own. Well, As it turns that. out, yes, Isabel is great at networking. The problem is that Ari isn't good at networking, oh. so that it's very difficult for me to like get in this head. But hmm. yes, I'll sure you will poke poke her. Do that way. Yes, make friends. Always better to have friends. <laughs> There is a... heard several kitters. <laughs> There's so Actually, many that was that was one one that kitter. Was one kid, he was cycling through all possible variations on uh, <laughs> one meow. kitty auto tuning himself. <laughs> yeah. There more, more or less. <laughs> More Extremely or less. Good. Oh, that's right. I was looking at the book. That's right. Um... Let me find... yeah, that's, yeah, that that that's her move. She's gonna like try to grease the reels a bit and live a little bit, like get Ooh. us Does information she, she needs. She gonna become what? special friends with the Desablers. Well, well, of course we... they've been they've they've been very useful to um, like, to my uh, operations, and so I. Well, to to be fair, that arrangement had only been made. Uh, prior to this a week ago. So your yeah. first actual meeting with an agent of the DeSable house is uh, going to occur within the next couple of days. Yes, so, okay. Yeah, so um, there is a, uh, there's a moment when you're, uh, when you're sitting in your office and then your, uh, your assistant uh, arrives to inform you that the, uh, the representative from House DeSable is here uh, along with uh, paperwork in order to work out the contract for uh, for the import of goods through their uh, through their network as they start to branch into Boston, um, and as uh, you let them into their office, you are greeted by a a gentleman who appears to be maybe in his uh, mid to late twenties, um, slightly dusty blonde hair, uh, those very very vibrant blue eyes um very clean complexion uh he's dressed in a very form-fitting vest uh jacket um tie that is a um a uh, a diamond uh a diamond ingrained uh, blue that has a hue very similar to his irises um and he steps in the gates frau Quincy. Are you in your office or my office? Oh, this is oh, in. This would, this would be in her office. Yeah, this, this is in Isabel's would... office. Yeah. She has absolutely no interest in getting Mister Killian involved with this as much as she can. This is, excuse me, like you own the building, you don't own me. So my name is Wilhelm Klein. I'm here on behalf of House de Sable. Ah, oh, so, ah, oh, so Klein. I was told to. Ex I was told to expect you. Come in. Come in. How was how was your how was your trip? Oh, quite nice, quite nice actually. I hear you'll be departing when uh, my conveyance actually leaves next. Yes, and yes, in fact, uh, ah, I suppose I suppose word comes down the grapevine, does it? Yes, I am the yes, I have cer I have certain business arrangements that I need that I need to make, and certain uh, well, so, and well, I've been looking for well, the change of scenery might might be nice. I've been in the city for quite a quite a while now. It might be good to see well. What goes on back in what goes on back in the old country? I haven't really visited since I was well since I was uh, alive. 
indeed. Yeah, yeah, that is a, a thing I find when dealing with um, kindred of the new world. Nice. But, yes, I'm here to negotiate terms uh, to make you part of the, uh, of the import of our goods. So our uh, growing network here. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Um, I understand you had an interest in purchasing uh, majority of the French wines. Uh, I believe there was also a request made for uh, a few Spanish spirits. Um, mm -hmm. Did you wish to include anything else into your uh, into your shipping arrangements? Or did you want me to simply send over a mm -hmm. uh, sample for, ah, I suppose I should ask if you are actually capable of tasting beverages before I offer you a sample platter. Uh, let's see, can I keep doing that? Uh, what, what do I need to be able to do that again? Uh, there is a merit, or you just need to have a um, a certain degree of humanity to allow oh. you to still drink things. Okay, I, I still have regular humanity seven, but I don't have. Uh, I don't think I took the merit, so I will double check the what merit. the humanity required for that is. Is it blusher health, or blush of health, or eat food? I forget. Blush what it's of called. life makes you look less dead. Oh, okay. Um. Eat food is the merit that would basically allow you to eat and drink. Mm -hmm. uh, but as for your humanity, give me one moment. 236. Hasn't dropped yet. Let's see. Uh, humanity 7. You can... Make a rouse check to use Blush of Life. You cannot have sexual intercourse per se, but you can fake it. <laughs> Unless using Blush of Life, food and drinks makes you vomit. Make a composure plus stamina check <laughs> to be able to go outside or to the bathroom first. So, yes, if you make a rouse check to use Blush of Life, you would be able to, um, to drink uh, or eat normally, but then you would have to expel yeah. it yeah, within yeah. A, a relatively short period of time. I don't use. I don't usually like him. I don't. I, I'm not usually one of the ones who can buy it myself. Mostly, it's a. It is a service I pro, I provide to. Uh, it is a service I provide to certain mortals, which creates some potentially useful feed. It, the, listen, let me, let me put. Let me put it this way: the business is more the lines of well, I provide certain nourish. I provide certain uh, entertainment and nourishment to to mortals, and these mortals provide certain entertainment and nourishment to myself and my own associates. It's a little, little a little corner of, a, a little cor a corner of give, give and take here, shall we say. So, uh... So, no, I, I will not be sampling it myself. I, 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 I have, a, I have, uh, I, I sort of, I sort of clap my hands and, uh, um, and Miss Violet shows up before, shows up next to me. She, uh, however, would you like us then to just run consensus on your clientele outside to see what they might be more inclined towards, and then we provide you a contract based on that? Hmm. That would be wonderful, actually. Yeah, but that, that, that far, far, far better, but far better, far better that, far, far better many to, to choose than one, after all. Uh, one, after all, what sells best is what is most popular. So of course, I'll have, a, I'll have a few associates walk through now. Wonderful. I'm I'll have them. Uh, I'll have them run consensus over the course of a few days, and then I will have them. Uh, and then once I've had that compiled, I will provide you with a list of suggestions for what you might wish to import through our um, arrangements. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. There is one more. There is one more thing I would like to ask, however. Oh, yeah, after, aside from like, of course. Uh, aside yeah. from, of course, your terms. Your terms of payment. You've offered your offerings to me have been quite generous. And of course, I must ask what you would like in return. But before that, the, the, the one other thing I would like to ask is, well, we will be spending some time, while we'll be stopping, we will be spending some time in Paris and Vienna for some time. And we were, I was wondering if uh, your associate, if your associates, uh, the, if, if the clan could potentially like provide, well, guidance for safe places, to st safe places to stay, any information on any potential problems or things to avoid. You, you know the works when it is staying in a new place, especially from in certain parts. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, you said you were heading to Pelly? 
Yes, indeed. All right. If you are heading to Paris, uh, that would be... So let's see who is currently running Paris. There we go. Um, in Paris, you would wish to speak with uh, Garrison Toussaint. Garrison Toussaint? Mm-hmm. Oui, Garrison Toussaint is a member of House de Sable who um, currently uh, runs operations within uh, the City of Lights. Mm-hmm. He's um, pleasant enough. A um, little flirty, but um, <laughs> I mean, the toy, though, aren't we all? <laughs> Is, is, is Isabel like just is, Isabel chuckles a little bit that? Hmm. I'm not. I, I'm not a. I, 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 I was able to say I'm not. Was there a? I heard like a noise from your end, John. Yes, is everything... my my wife is um my wife is tr- currently trying to um. Give uh give medicine to uh to our youngest cat and. Oh dear. She is uh, oh, no. she reacting. She's yeah, she's not a fan. Quickly. She is she is Poor not. baby. So we're we're gonna give her a treat and wait for her to calm down and probably try again before going to bed once this wraps up. Okay. Yeah, she got you. Uh, got yes. Six Thank minutes. You. Yep. So uh, yes. Yes. Thank you. So I will have them. Uh, I will have them run around. Um, is there anything else we can do for you, uh, hmm. or is there something else that uh, actually I um. As I understand it, uh, you will need to be speaking with um, with Herr Toussaint anyway. Oh, uh, yes? Yeah, well, yes. Um, the, the prince of the city, he wound up uh, calling in some, uh, arranging for some favors through House de Sable. So um, uh, Herr Toussaint will uh, will have the information gathered for your um, for your friend, um, uh, Frau Lori. Oh, wonderful. Ah, wonderful! I will make sure. I'll make sure to. Re- I'll make sure to relay that and get th- get things arranged well. That's ah, it is. So, so I see my. So I see. I so I see myself twice in your debt. Then now, how should how shall I repay this? How shall I make now? Because of course, obviously, we are not men of charity here. You are men. We, we are men of business. So what are you? So you you've given me some grand offers. What? Well, I mean, what what the monetary exchange would be will depend entirely on what products to be imported, which yes, the yes. census for the next week. Uh, beyond mm-hmm. that, the rest of our arrangements uh, have been made with Hell King. And Very good. I will be uh, opening up the Sabla in, uh, interests here in the city of Boston. Oh, very good. I hope this, I hope that we have a long, a, a long, pleasant, and profitable relationship. <laughs> You're just hoping. And she, um, extend, she extends a hand to shake. <laughs> oh, by the time you return, perhaps the uh, new hotel will be finished. The new hotel? Oh. We the Sablers have always been in the, uh, the industry of um, hospitality. Oh. So there will be... Um, a new hotel constructed uh, along with a uh, dance hall restaurant, and that will be my step here. Hmm. And visit. this will also be an opportunity to prove that Boston will be a profitable uh, venture and that I am fit to be moved up in the hierarchy of our little cartel. Hmm. Well, sir. I... Well, good, well, good, sir. I certainly... I certainly hope this works well for you. I'll have to I'll have to visit your hotel once it's once it's built here, and I'll well sample some s- sample some of the uh, the few things I can do. So, even if it, after all, whether after all, even though I can't eat, I can still participate in some uh, some activities. Fear not, we'll always have something for our kindred guests. But yes, we'll run consensus and then send you uh, an updated. Uh, document shortly uh shortly after we've compiled and if anything anything that and, and of course anything that uh needs to get anything that uh get, needs to go through me that i w- w- while i'm not around can always be handled through miss filet she's my primary yes she, she is my she is my primary assistant here and will be i think i'm annoyed because out of character i want her to come with us because i have a two dot because she's a two dot retainer but like in character it would 
make no sense for her not to leave Miss Violet in charge of what's here. She is because she's a two dot retainer. Because she's the two dot retainer, she would yeah. absolutely like knows she knows her shit. She knows how to like make this stuff work. Yeah. Yep. Uh, when you say that, he looks at her and goes, "Oh, I'm so we shall get along famously," and you immediately feel the I'm currently flirting with my with my two dot retainer, right? Okay. You can't, mm. uh, okay, I, I, out of character, can, like, can you, can you, if, if someone is my ghoul, and they're, like, away from me for a while, can someone, like, steal them by, like, doing that, or is, I have no idea if that works. Only, only if you've been away long enough for the, uh, blood bonding to drop down enough tiers, and for them to circumvent it. So, for example, if you're away long enough, and the three-step blood bond drops to two, mm -hmm. and then he manages to get three dots of blood bonding on her, then yes. Yeah. Which, that's not going to happen. That would be very weird if that were to happen. And would require some degree of them betraying me, which they... Let's not it, it would reflect poorly on him, which would yeah. reflect poorly on House de Sabla, and then in order to correct House de Sabla's image, they would have to punish him. Right, right. And, um... Yes, boons well, might have to be... Reparations and boons might have to be arranged between the primogen or even the prince if... Because ghoul stealing is frowned yeah, upon. Yeah. I don't. No. I'm sorry for not knowing enough about no, the settings, no. like That's rank fine. and file. So I, but you're I also playing a young kindred, things. so yeah. yes. No, yes. And <laughs> just, just for the sake of people knowing, because you'll probably find this out if you deal with the Sabla going forward a lot. Uh, Colette the Sabla does not take breaches of contract very well. <laughs> so there's a good chance that his punishment will be his public execution in front of all uh, in front of all involved parties. Hmm. Some kind of entertainment. Oh, sometimes entertainment's going to be fun. But um, sometimes entertainment can be fun. That's a stupid thing to say. Why did I say that? <laughs> well, <laughs> sometimes I mean, entertainment can be fun, as it turns out. Executions are entertainment. People flock to those things wherever they happen. That's like hashtag Venture Life. Of course. That is that is what your yes. inside Venture was saying, even <laughs> if she's not saying it out loud. Oh. No, I just... No, I just like I was, I was just like thinking out. I was just thinking, trying to say something like sort of well, something about entertainment. But then my my brain said sometimes sometimes entertainment can be fun, as opposed to the times entertainment is not fun, which kind of defeats the point of entertainment. Actually, that's why I was thinking that sounded really dumb. <laughs> I, I I apologize. English is my third language. I'm not familiar with that phrase. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it in turn. Okay. Uh, no, no, no big deal. So, I will be. I will be I will be seeing you in a few. Uh, well, uh, I actually have no idea how long it will take. What, what, what's my estimate for how long this will take? Week. Out of yeah, I will be seeing you most likely in like a week or two. Okay, and uh, our alarm has gone off for the end of game because I want everyone who needs to get up early tomorrow to be able to go to bed on time tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, I guess this was the equivalent of a shopping episode, but the last, the, the first few episodes were rather high octane for Vampire the Masquerade, <laughs> so maybe it's just nice to breathe and, and let our characters just be. Although I'm sorry I monopolized like a half hour just talking to one Malkavian. You, you know what? It happens. Yeah. Sometimes it just has to focus on one character for a little while, and, uh... It's, it's sort of the unavoidable portion of role-playing because the story isn't always about the entire party. Sometimes it really is just about the one person and it just, it happens. And it's the storyteller's job to make sure that everyone gets their, their moment of being the center of attention for a half hour, an hour, whatever it is. Ver Vern's got his coming up once, uh, once we track down uh, his forebearer. Uh, Isabel's theoretically going to have some coming up uh, when dealing with Queen Anne. Um, Unfortunately, the, the Bart keeps getting upstaged by Ace. <laughs> Isabel made this entire deal thing where she could have picked up all sorts of useful information and didn't. Hey. Like, where are you building a hotel? Could this be a her how to von true? Could this be a problem for someone? I don't know. We'll find if, out. If the disciples well, okay. are building a hotel in Boston, we're all gonna know what it is very soon. Yes. 
<laughs> also, like, to be fair, this is partially just me, Ari, being bad at this more than it is, like, not to be just being this. bad at You're this. You're new at this. That's a, there's a difference. Vastly different circumstances. Yeah, like, my, my general figure is, like, as long as, listen, my, I think, is, isn't it a general thought is, like, a big, like, entertainment hotel thing that gets set up there, as long as it doesn't have a speakeasy, is not a threat to her at all. In fact, it's the opposite of a threat to her. Like, if, if, if she she is providing, she has, as long as they, like, keep, don't, like, muscle in on her territory and her, like, and her specific service that she's offering, sure, it might be a problem for Bart. She gives zero shits about that. But if you make it Bart's problem, Bart will make it your problem. Well, I'm... <laughs> Well, ultimately, if this were going to be Bart's problem, I think the Tasablos would have sent him a note already. He's like, hey, can we just buy this from you? Because we want it. <laughs> like, trust me. If, if it comes down to it, and Isabel has to choose between, like, working for the Tasablos and working for Bart, I don't know which decision she will make yet because of the fact that, like, she is very annoyed at Bart power moving her there. So, if you ever meet Colette, you will know your decision. I met her in the Shadowfell. That yeah, was this an interesting is... D&D game. What, okay, Tori Dorn is... a D&D game? Yes. Anyway, that's another story for another stream. Uh, is... Let's do outros so everyone can go to bed. <laughs> this is going to be regular Colette, so you don't have to worry. Oh, uh, okay. So, yes, my name is John. I run games when I'm not selling alcohol. I hope everyone had fun. <laughs> oh, we could get really in depth with with this this whole transaction because you do sell Speaking alcohol which, in real life. If you want to send me information about like selling alcohol and like alcohol in general, I know I literally only drink when I am go. Here's the thing, I only literally only drink when I am with friends getting drunk, so that we can like watch or watch a bad anime together or something like that. Mm. There is no other, th that is the extent of my alcohol experience, and I understand that that's not what most people have. I just, I like being intoxicated with people I, with people who I am friends with, and, and it no is a fun else. thing to do, and it is a fun thing to do on occasion, Yes. and that is the extent of my alcohol experience. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I have already found someone to raid, Perception Studios, so let's do outros. I love those kids. I find so uh let's go clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So Dracus. Alright. Uh when I am not playing the feral Nosferatu, uh I'm Dracus. I exist on a couple social media platforms as actual Dracus, just like I am in chat. Um I'm here most Saturdays as various characters, usually Klaus. Um Klaus with eight million dearly. aliases. Yeah, Klaus with eight million aliases. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's about that. Hashtag finals week. Yeah. Bot Killian. Uh, I am Zardoz. Uh, I am at Once Future Doctor on Twitter. Uh, when I'm not busy running alcohol, I'm selling things. And you write games. I do, I do write role-playing games, yeah. Yay. I've got a whole bunch of them go on sale, I think the 20th, for the end of year, because I'm raising prices January 1st. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are having to do that this year. Inflation be like that, yo. You. Ari? Yes, and I am uh, Ari. I play Isabel Quincy on this podcast. I, you can find me... Uh, nowhere, because this this thing involves my real name, and I prefer to keep my my. Uh, yeah. I don't really use Twitter ex or like any kind of social media except for like to do to like to do to just for like social stuff and like artwork and such. Not of mine, just to look at things. So hi, <laughs> I'm Ari. I have I'm, I'm a teach I'm a teacher. I don't, this is my first experience being like on any kind of like public social media like thing, aside from like having a Twitter that nobody was allowed to find out about. This is Ari's first adventure on the internet. Woohoo! Internet's and, adventure! And last but not least, Miss Chris. Hi, I'm at Ms. Chrysala on all social medias, including Twitch sometimes, when I'm not Magic Fish Radio, and the rest of the time I'm Magic Fish Radio on social media. 
Uh, I run the set. I run the Exit to Eden game on Saturdays. Uh, follow us on social media. Find out when that is. Best thing is to follow us on Discord because I've not. I am in the process of changing ADHD medications. I am not guaranteed to remember to post to any of the other social medias than our Discord. So just to warn you, join our Discord if you want to know what's going on, because my brain will be extra jello-y for the next few weeks. Uh, and yeah, um, also join our Discord because uh, I'm having apparently a meteor shower party on my Animal Crossing island tonight, and we're probably going to do a voice chat because I hate using the text feature. So if you want in on that, just join our Discord. That's probably where I'll post the code in about a half hour. And it won't, it won't be streamed, though, because we're- The I'm, real reason we were making sure to end on time. <laughs> well, no, I also- That's Chris's want, reason to end on time, yeah. but- I also want people to not be sleep deprived because of my channel. Also, you know, again, if you're watching this on VOD instead of live, hi! Thank you for your future eyeballs. This will also be uploaded onto YouTube where the ads are less obnoxious. And, uh, yeah, so join our Discord. I'm hoping the Animal Crossing is an incentive to make people join our Discord if they haven't, but who knows. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, we... I don't think our schedule for this game is completely set for the rest of the month. We still have to work that out. I think we're gaming next week. I'm free next week. Okay. I'm free next week. I am free. I am free next week. Well, there we are then. Uh, Zardoz is very quiet. But... Oh, I'll be here next week. Oh, okay. The week after that gets dicey because I'm uh, out of town. Okay. Yeah. We'll work this out. On... So... So we will be here, same vamp time, same vamp time, same vamp channel. Uh, after that, we'll let you know, join the Discord. I totally just pinged it in chat, so. Yay! Thank, thank you, actual Dracus, for modding, because I don't know how. But you're also a very good mod. I know, yeah. If I'm the bar, that's too late. You were... <laughs> Merkin and, and Dracus are excellent mods. Always say hi to them in chat because they are modding. All right, so uh, get ready to raid Perception Studios. So we'll we'll be here on Saturday for Exit to Eden. We will be back here for Vampire the Masquerade next Tuesday. Uh, until then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll bite you later. Bye. Bye.